Guys, isn't it weird just looking at a camera and talking? Yeah, Don't it you is. find that just bizarre? Yeah, when I'm and in my like office. And it's like just two guys sitting in, a, in an empty room looking at a camera and talking. Yeah. It's just so weird. Oh, Josiah, hit it! It'll take it. There we go. There it is. Good job. Josh Drelecki, dude, how you doing, brother? It's it's it's, it's wonderful, and I'm glad to be here. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so this is Josh Drelecki. You have a middle name? Martin. Martin. Yep. Josh. Is it? Did they name you Josh or Joshua? Joshua. Joshua yep. Martin Strelecki. Yep. Okay, so were you named after anybody? Well, my grandfather was Jerome Martin Strelecki. My dad is John Martin Strelecki. I'm Joshua uh, Martin Strelecki and so, okay, Josiah so the, Martin Strelecki. So Martin is is kind of a family tradition. Yeah, JMS. Uh, initials. Uh, so then they said, well, we got to stick with the JMS initials, and we're just going to go with Joshua. Or, or are you actually named after Joshua in the Bible? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I don't yeah. know. I never asked my parents. We always had in our, in our home growing up, we had the, I shouldn't know it. But as for me and my house, we yeah, will serve, we'll the, serve Lord. the Lord. Yeah, yeah we yeah. always had that up in our house, so I figured it was, uh, okay. it was a biblical name. What is a what is a Strelecki? What's what kind of a name is that? Polish. Polish. Yeah, my mo my mother's maiden name was Baliki. 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 <laughs> my dad's Strelecki. Baliki met Strelecki. Mil Milwaukee. And we got Milwaukee's Josh. Yep. Polish. Pretty spo uh, Polish culture. Or, whatever. Uh, or it used I to be. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, do you guys know, uh, have you done the ancestry thing and you've been able to go? Yeah, but I don't recall yeah, the yeah, results. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, my ancestry, my dad, it changes every week. So I'm, I, I don't know if the things I say about my ancestry is still true anymore, yeah. but I still say them. Uh, I'm going to ask, I'm going to get the one embarrassing question out of the way. <clears throat> okay. The, that, just one? Yeah, I just got the one. Because well, I, I think that bald head is a work of art. You know? And my question is, how do you get it so shiny? Do you have to do much? Is it just naturally shiny, or do you have to? I don't <laughs> always special eat. treatment in the morning, or <laughs> that would be fun. I what that would be like. No, I don't eat the I, best, and I sweat a lot. Yeah. And so then, so then. Oh, I see. The, so the, really putting stuff the, on it. Yeah, I don't need to well. do it. Yeah, yeah no, it's yeah, it's it natural. Be shiny oil. enough as it is. Yeah, yeah, natural oil. Yeah, I don't care what they say, man. It's beautiful. Your head's got, your head's got a brighter future than mine. That's for sure. Uh -oh. well, we, we should find out. <laughs> I just, I'd rather go bald. This thing is such a mess. I got to put grease in it, and it, you know, oh, it it's, it's a total mess, dude. Oh, I, I, um, now, in the in the last message you did on adoption, yeah, 
you talked about adoption by hair, and then you were like, well, I, don't want, I didn't want to look into that, so then you moved on. Was yeah. that a joke? No, Webster's 1828. There's adoption by hair? That's what it said. Because I, 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 I didn't I go into up, it I, You said that, and I'm like, is that a joke or is he kidding? And so I looked it up in the, uh, I went to Naves, and I went to all these things in my Bible program, and I'm like, and then I did adoption by hair in the Bible, Google search, I had to actually, couldn't, I find, couldn't anything. find anything. No. Well, that's just what Webster said, unless it was a, <laughs> unless it was a typo. <laughs> I'm but like no, I said by uh, adoption by hair, adoption by matrimony, and uh, then, uh, adoption um, by testament. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea what what, what the that hair would be. has to do. Uh, with Yeah, that. like I said, I didn't look into it. <laughs> yeah, like it didn't apply to me. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I usually take too long covering a subject anyway. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I, and uh, for those online, Josh Rilecki, uh, beneath the video, there's links to all the good stuff. Josh on YouTube. And you got to check out the last adoption uh, message. I loved it. Uh, we had, uh, you get about 20 minutes into it, and he draws stick figures. I love the stick figures, dude. Yeah, Nobody I, does stick figures like you do. I forgot who it was, but we got a Facebook comment saying that they liked the, the drawing and the pen. I did. Yeah. I, I totally yeah. did, too. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then it ended with the cross in that illustration. Yeah. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. I loved it. Yeah. yeah. The stick figures especially. Dude. <laughs> Nobody does stick figures like you do. How's some, um, and there was the part toward the end I really loved too, where you're talking about, uh, I think it was like about the structure of heavenly places and you're thinking, and you, your thinking used to be, oh, there'll be somebody over me again and that's yeah. what, the way it's always going to be and then you just brought it home, you know, and then you were talking about, um, if I remember right, you were talking, you were like, no. That won't be the character of that person that's over you. Won't be your character in that heavenly heavenly seat. Right. You know, it's yep. it's not about you. You know, and that person that's over you, it was never about them to begin with. Right. Which is why they are over you to begin with. And even in those seats, it's not. It'll never be about you and your accomplishments and what you did and what you achieved. It's about everything he achieved in you. Yeah. I love that point. I thought that was awesome. Well, I've had so many conversations with people about you know the reward, the judgment seat of Christ. You know the, for those that do believe and see that there will be you know a governmental authority in heaven and earth, and um, you know a kind of a disdain for it, mm. and right. because they take the the earthly concept, the corruption, the pride. Right. You know the, uh, you know just selfishness that we experience in this life, and they think, well, if there's, they equate that to governmental positions, right. but of course Christ is the head right. overall. Right. Well, he's not right. that. Right. And so our conformity and our our transforming our uh, of his work of his word in us yeah. is getting us to to be humble, to be yeah. selfless, yeah. to love one another, yeah. and so that's what well, that's that's like, what's going to be filled with. It's not like you're going to spend an eternity getting corrected by some you <laughs> right, know right. micromanaging ego maniac. You know exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. going to be love and joy, the Amen. likes of which you can't even comprehend. Yep. You know. Yep. I, I love those thoughts. Yeah. I thought that was amazing. How you doing, man? I'm doing How's good. your family? I, we're doing great. Yeah. This is we we don't do this very often. <laughs> well, we're going to bring vacations. the family up here toward the end. There, hey, I think you can see. Is that yeah? You can, that that girl in the middle? Yeah, that's that's Abigail. That's <laughs> Abigail in the middle there, blocking the sign. No, and you're welcome to do that. And then uh, to the right there, the head that's right in front of the red shoes. That's Josiah, and then uh, and then Michelle is uh, off off stage. She's off screen there. Uh, so yeah, they, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> you found it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you found it. Uh, oh no, come up here. No, come come around up here. No, come around, come around. Get up here. Get up here next to Josh. And uh, um, this is my help. Just this yeah, is my yeah, help. Yeah. Me. Hey, you say you hello to Michelle here? Strelecki. Hello. Hey, uh, the beautiful, the sweet, wonderful Michelle Strelecki. How did? Uh, okay, since I have you here, what are Josh's best qualities? Oh. What are the things about Josh that you love so much, mm -hmm. besides the bald head? Yes. The, the masculine frame, you know, mm -hmm. the uh, faithfulness, clearly, passionate preacher, mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff. Does he embarrass easily? Would he actually turn red if, you know? Yes. Yes, all right, good. He's very humble. <laughs> um, yes, he is. Yeah, he's I'm, very formal and polite. Mm -hmm. Very, yeah. Well, that's that's what Charlie McQuillan told me yesterday. <laughs> You're gonna find that Josh is really formal. 
You know, he's like, I'm like a cut up, you know, but Josh is just so formal. <laughs> I can let loose. Kinda. I bet you can, man. <laughs> Josh loves the Lord. And that's yes. what I love about Josh. Yes. Mm-hmm. I remember when you did that, that message for the ladies' conference. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had um, the few times you mentioned Josh, you can clearly tell, oh, Michelle really loves Josh still. And you can tell, oh, she's really proud of him too, mm-hmm. as a pastor. Yeah. I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And probably Josh is, he's good only because he married Michelle. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's the opposite. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's the opposite. All right. Well, let me, you, you want to stay up here? You want to join us or? Mm-hmm. I can go back for a while. Uh, all right, we'll get you. We'll get you. We'll yeah. get you back up here at the end. And, uh, it is interested. awesome to see. This is Miss Michelle Struckley. You got a middle name too? Deline. Deline. Mm-hmm. That's your maiden name, um, or is middle name? Your Deline. Mm-hmm. Michelle Deline Hansel was That's my name. name. Hansel. Mm-hmm. Wow. So yeah. you're German. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Part. Huh? Part German. Part least. German. Yeah. But in the German in the pole? Huh? I was so interested of that adoption by, by hair. Because <laughs> she has so much of it. <laughs> I thought he was trying to say air. I thought he, I thought he said yeah. air too, and I wondered, well, wait a I minute. How do you have adoption by air too? So either way, yeah. it was weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's okay. hilarious. All right. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a Catholic thing. We're going to have her back on because I'm not done interrogating that one. Um, <laughs> okay, so the... Um, here it is. Adoption by hair was performed by. That's this is what my wife does. She helps me out a lot. <laughs> she gives you the answers. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Maybe I need yeah. one of those wives. <laughs> it's a Catholic thing. Adoption by hair was performed by cutting off the hair of a person and giving it to the adoptive father. Thus, Pope John. I can't read normal Roman numerals. Adopted Bozin, the king of Errols. Oh, there you go. So you cut off the hair. This is and he gives it to the adopted father. <laughs> what if you didn't have hair? It's I could have been adopted by hair. <laughs> That's why I didn't look into it anymore. I know, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I'll do a couple of quick questions, and then we'll do the, the, the big intro. The, uh, how about... Um, how, how, uh, how long have you been... Pat- you're, okay, so this is Josh... Josh, what is it? Martin Strelecki, yep. pastor of let me see, Twin Cities Grace Fellowship yeah. Church. Yep. I always forget one of those words. Usually, that's big. How long have you been pastor there? Um, it'll be eleven years in July. Wow! And then I was uh, associate fill-in teacher. Yep. For I know that feeling well. Three years before that, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, how. How did you get, and I know we probably covered this in the first time we had John, but how did you, how did you get started at Twin Cities Fellowship? Is that, had you already come into Grace before you uh, became just, associate? Just right before there? that. Just right before that. We, um, oh, so, so dad, it had to have been right before that. With me. They were probably, somebody was probably reading Christianity Today. And they saw your name in it, and they're like, hey, we got to bring that kid in as associate pastor of our church, because he sounds great, right? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> you got to tell them the story of Christianity today. That's my favorite Josh Lecky story ever. You're in college, and you're like, right division. Uh, you're falling in love with right division, if I remember right, and it got you in a lot of trouble. Yeah. My dad introduced me to right division. <clears throat> And uh, your dad did. Yeah, yeah. He he came across the expression, you know, Paul saying my gospel. Yeah, that's and how he. That's how he got. Yeah, he got just thought, glued, wow, that's really in. an arrogant statement. Yeah. Or right, right. God's doing something with him. Right. And so that led him to get online and search. Was this and found in, Did you grow up in Twin Cities? No, no. I grew up in Michigan. Oh, okay. The UP. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was born in Milwaukee. Second grade, we moved to the UP. Okay, yep. 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 And so, and then I came out for college. And UP is Upper Peninsula? Upper Peninsula. Yep. 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 Um, close to Canada. So they have a lot, of, kind of a Canadian yeah. accent sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah he, he shared with me Right Division. He let me borrow his book, uh, Things That Differ. Oh, cl- and, yeah. And uh, right at that same time, I went on a missions trip basketball missions trip i played mm. ball in college yeah, i got and photos we went to ecuador quito ecuador and i was we we're on the bus and here's all this beautiful 
creation around me. Yeah, I couldn't put the book down. <laughs> so everyone's yeah, looking I out the, the feeling. Yeah, everyone's looking out the windows, and here I am reading a book. <laughs> so like, what are you reading? Well, yeah. So oh, I just started sharing, and then uh, we came back stateside, and and yeah. uh, a lot of my t- you know a lot of my teammates were like, that makes a lot of sense. And yeah, we got back yeah. stateside and. They talked to one person. They said it was heresy, and <laughs> that led a, a slew of events and meetings with people at Northwestern. Yep, and uh, they ended up. I had run for the student government, uh, for the student government ministries director oh, position. Oh, and they wouldn't let you then. Uh, yeah, and then they. I got it. Um, you had to have two thirds vote of the student body. Huh. I got it, and then. Um, so, but then that happened in the summer before yeah. I would have filled in that position. Wow. And they they decided to remove me for potential divisive beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> so, AKA the truth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then and then Christianity Today did a write up on this kerfluffle. Yeah. <laughs> with Josh Trelecki and his strange views on the yeah. Bible. Yeah. yeah. I was at. Uh, I was either at Caribou or like Panera Bread. Do you have Panera Breads up there? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, do you have them here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, we like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and a uh, gal called me and wanted to get an interview. She was she was much more kind on the phone than what I thought the article <laughs> kind of presented. I was pretty n- novice at the whole the whole you know controversy. So, <coughs> oh, that's so. I love it. So, if you go to Christianity Today, you Google search, you, then you go into the search box look for Josh Trelecki. You'll read all about him. Yeah, yeah. It's a couple paragraphs. The best, it's not, it's par- not, the best article ever in Christianity it's not, today. It's not much of a read. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here I got. I've got one for. I got to do. I got to say something spiritual. Okay. Well, okay. Here's here's a couple of things. Uh, you, you on on the channel on your church's channel, you're going yeah. through Ephesians. Yep. You're going through uh, First Corinthians, if yep. I'm not mistaken. And then you started a new series called uh, Grace for Grace. I did. Yes. And I listened to a couple of those yesterday. That's awesome. So you so you feel the need to talk about grace. Do do. How long is that series going to be? Fred has been in the ministry, I think, something like 40 years. And to this day, he's like, I still don't feel like I ever reached the end of his grace. Yeah. I, you, I have ever fully preached his grace, you know? <laughs> and I saw you started that, and I was like, oh, good luck with that. You'll, he'll, that thing will go on forever. <laughs> but those have been great messages. What, yeah. was your, what was your motivation behind talking about grace for grace? Yeah, the, the well, to be honest, First Corinthians. Yeah. We've been in First Corinthians, you know, f- probably about a year. I can't remember exactly, but um, we're going through, you know, especially now chapter five and chapter six, right? We're in chapter six, and there's just a lot yeah. of correction, which yeah. is what grace does. It yeah. teaches us what to deny and how to live. And, yep. And so I thought uh, it'd be good to have somewhat of a balance and not have so much, not that it's so much, but not have all the corrective doctrine to to balance it with just talking about his grace yeah and uh there's, yeah. there's so much to talk about everything's connected to it everything's in you know related to it there's no end to it i you know um we Hal and i made the point uh had sometimes talked in the past about you know the unsearchable riches yeah a lot of people say well you could go to the old testament and search and you'll never find it or it could also be in a, a warehouse so va- massive with an in- inventory so big it's with the, you can't inventory everything that's in that warehouse because there's so much to it yeah. you know kind of thing yeah uh so i think that's a how question yes <laughs> <laughs> you know and uh uh i think it's uh, you know and i um i mean it's not just what grace isn't just what gets you saved grace is what inspires you yeah. you know and yep. grace is is the way you talk the way you act the way you interact with other people you know yep. It's everything. The whole thing is in grace, I, and I love that you're doing that. That's awesome. Well, I really, I really enjoyed it. One of the things that I've been kind of struck by is, you know, we we talk about God and Him being the Creator and all yeah. those kind of things, and and um, you know, just seeing His grace in creation as well. You know, that, yeah. I mean, the very he, fact that it's so epic it's is an act of grace on his part yeah, yeah. i mean how, what would it be like for a god who's not gracious he would he even create right well i well, don't see, think so and that goes to something i i there are very specific things i admire about your messages and uh you know um one of which being you know how 
organized it is, thoroughly researched, you love context, <laughs> uh, you, uh, you give a good sense of the word, you're not afraid to look up you know, the, the depths and the meanings of these words, but I think, and I don't even, I was trying to figure out how to say this last night, and I don't think I know how to put it, but you're like consistently awestruck by the glory of it all, the bigness of it all. Like, you, like I think you, you see the big picture, you see how big things are, and you're often trying to convey the, just how small we are, how, how, how unfathomably awesome and huge God is, the, how amazing these, the calling and the seats and everything is in this vast, epic, unbelievably immense universe, you know, like that kind of thing. Like you're really good at bigness you know in your in your messages am, am i am i close to like all struck about just how glorious everything is kind of thing well i, I you know I, I truly feel that way you know and, and think yeah. that way when i sit down with the with the text you know there's just so many times where you know you kind of sit back in your chair and you're just like what did i just read <laughs> what what thought was just generated yeah, by the word yeah, of god yeah, in me yeah. that you know and, and especially when you always i i always try to um even though i'm no longer identified as a sinner right i i think about my past right i do and too. that that humbles yeah that humbles me so then when you have these grand thoughts that are to me and right. to others, right? I just get I get blown away. I, I remember, you know, you know, I was kind of conflicted when I first came back to Grace because I have, uh, you know, you'd have Paul say, "Well, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth unto those things that are before." And I'm like, "Okay, I can do that," you know. Yeah. But I can't. I can't forget. Yeah. You know, and then you have Paul, even as late as First Timothy, when he talks about, I think, Jesus Christ our Lord, who hath enabled me, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. Yeah. He never forgot either. No. Yeah. You know? but, in, but I found that, but I, I, you know, Paul, in his later life, he didn't forget it, but his past was a means of him praising God for his yeah. work in him. And yep. he, then he, gets, he takes his past, and then he says in verse 14, and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant. Yeah. You know? Um, so it's all, you know it's just acknowledging the depths of your spiritual ruin in comparison to the heights of the exceeding abundant grace of God. Preach it. <laughs> I knew the Keep way going. saying it that way would, would light your fire. <laughs> well, that, 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 that's just Pauline, you know. I mean, right. you're in Ephesians one and right. Colossians one, and you're talking about the, the grand purpose of <laughs> yeah. it all, and yeah. yet, and yet, what does he do? Yeah. For one verse, he he sticks in redemption. Yeah. And you're like, oh. This is what redemption has, yes. has provided me, yes. you know. So th those those lofty things are are wonderful to think about. Hey, Michelle, about. is there is there a particular topic that really gets Josh going? Is there anything particular that really lights his fire, gets him going? Like if I if I have Mike Moriarty on here with me, I'll just say, well, this guy said the old man's alive. I got ten minutes. I can sit back and watch Mike, you know, go off on the old man being dead. Is there anything that lights your fire that really gets you going? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see like the let me, let me guess like uh, probably the basics of right division in the face of calvinism and all these other denominations you you know you'd be pretty passionate about that uh probably grace uh i would guess since you just started a new series i don't know i, I uh what would be your passion well yeah i i, I I've really enjoyed going through Ephesians 1 and, and teaching predestination. Because, I love predestination. You know, I came out of, like you said, I yeah, came out of yeah, Calvinism. And, yeah. you know, for a long time it was, okay, I, I knew what it wasn't. I knew what predestination wasn't. Right. But then, have, you know, trying to learn what it is. Right. And right. learn it in, in a right way. But, no, I think probably the most. What would you say? <laughs> I would I would probably say uh, it's weird she thing. has us both looking at her for approval and, and permission <laughs> well I was just wondering I'm, cu I'm curious of what she's going to say I'm always <laughs> curious what she would say uh, I think one of the things uh, for me for quite a few years now has been that you know the way that God's grace teaches us what to deny and how to live for yes. so long I had to wrestle through that we're created unto good works. Yes. And and how does those good works how does it work? work? Yeah, how do you do that? Right, yeah. yeah. That and, how, and how do I know that it's not after the flesh? And how do right. I know it's after the spirit? Right. And uh, I, I just think that... That was my problem too. Especially in grace circles where we 
and rightly so, hammer away, hammer away that were justified by God's grace through faith. Yes. And no works. Yes. There's the other part of it where it's unto good works. Yes. And so I think we, we miss that. Was that what you were going to say? Justification in the means. Yes. Oh! Yeah. yeah. She, she said, and me, uh, hopefully I will say that justification is a means, is a means to an end, to an end to of being conformed. Justification is a means yeah. to an end of being conformed. Yeah. Oh, justification is a means to an end of being conformed. It's not, yes, it's not exactly. the end in itself. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's totally. a means. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You got your wife quoting you. That's awesome. Oh. That's that is a that is quite a marriage, dude. She's my greatest support. I'm, <laughs> I'm so thankful. I, you know, when I hit, and I, I know I've said this a million times, but when I hit bottom, you know, I came back to church. I, I grew up in, in Grace churches, so I'm like, I don't need to know Paul's the apostle. I need to know how to live. Yeah. I need to know how this whole thing yep. works because I don't get it. And I, I don't need to be told about one baptism, all this stuff. I need to. Yep. I need to know how to. When I get up in the morning, what do I do? Yep. You know, like it, I had to. I had to have it broken down to basics like that. How do I deal with sin? That's a, that yep. was a big deal. Yep. And uh, you know, I, that's why, that's why I'm in love with identification yep. so much because that you, you, you don't know how to live until you know what God made you in His yep. Son. You yep. know. And um, then once you finally reckon the fact you're dead, buried, risen with him, all that stuff, and you're literally freed from sin, yep. I struggled with that for at least a year before I finally embraced it. Right. You know, freed from sin, really? You got to be kidding me! That you had to take another leap of faith to really accept that. Right. And uh, and then and then it, once I accepted it, oh, it's heaven. Yeah, it's just heaven on earth. Yeah, I love you, it. You know, justification, identification. Yeah. you know those those doctrines, those truths. It's all God doing it mm -hmm. and then and then when you get to the good works component of it you're still relying upon the word of god you're relying upon him and who he is to to renew your mind so that you know you can serve him and, and live unto him um and and do those good works but that it's not your flesh it's not you it's him yep through learning his word within you Yes. You're still you're still making a choice. You're still being responsible. Yes, but you're relying upon His grace yes. in that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's what I, for me. That's one of the greatest motivators to read my Bible. Yeah, because I want to have just as much I I have an assurance of my salvation. Yeah, I want to have an assurance of that what I'm doing in my life is coming from Him. Yep. So the more I get in the Word. The more I, you know, understand that, you know, not that I can't, I'll walk after the flesh, you know, and I still sin, of course, but I have more of a, of a confidence as I'm reading more of his word and I'm, I'm yielding to it and believing it, that when I go and live, right, that, right. Um, it's coming from him. All right, I'm seeing the, I'm seeing the comments in the live chat. Well, uh, let me do the let me do the opening here, and uh, and then we'll, and then we'll get to some of your questions here. I don't know how much uh, I, I won't be I don't know how much I'll be able to read from the live chat. So if you have a question for me or Josh, just put question uh, in caps or Q or something in the live chat, and we will try to get to it. Um, if I don't know the answer, Josh will. I promise you. Uh, the uh, uh, by the way. This is the Grace Life Podcast. We are your mad, bad brothers in Christ. Mad in the sense of... Mid-Acts dispensationalist. <laughs> Did I get it? Yeah, bad in the sense of... Blessed and delivered. There you go. Yeah, that's it. That's I listen, it. I listen Ma enough. <laughs> My, uh, bad is a Mike Moriarty thing. He came up with that. I like it. As soon as, as soon as we moved in together, Mike's like, I hope you have a really bad day. I'm like, what is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> Seriously. What is your problem? Yeah. He's like, no, have a bad day. I'm telling you, bad. Yeah. Blessed and delivered. I was like, oh. Do you have a... Uh, well, you should finish. <laughs> oh, thanks for letting me finish, John. Uh, we have, we have uh, uh, I don't remember what else I usually say. We, uh, I, I think I need to go full bore since you're here. So let me see here. We've got. I was going to ask, uh, do you have it on a, do you have it like a, a bumper sticker? Do you have oh, it? we you should. should do that. Should yeah, totally you do should that. do that. Yeah, yeah. That, that'd, that'd catch people's attention. Uh, this I wrote myself. Uh, never felt so happy to be so mad, and it never felt so good to be so, so bad. bad. I love it. I love it. Uh, we uh, uh, we hope your day is so bad it makes you mad. That's something Mike said. Uh, while the world is careening down Route 666, we've got our in Christ passports for Flight 777. 
Titus 213 Airlines, ready for takeoff at a moment's notice. Delilah Research says it's an epic flight. EPIC, eternal purpose in Christ. Ooh. We are wow. watching the countdown to the showdown of Armageddon, and we're going to party like it's Revelation 19.9. Yes, I looked up Revelation 19.9. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's, but it's got a nice ring to it, so I'm sticking with it. <laughs> uh, we got a bunch of links beneath the video. Two things. One, yes, I know. I've gotten already gotten uh, messages about yesterday's podcast. Mike and I did a podcast where we talked about a favorite Jordan article, and I don't know what happened last night. For some reason, YouTube decided to block it. I, I have, uh, on, the, on the studio page, we... Um, they blocked it. it. All it says is terms and policies, and uh, you try. I try to appeal it, and it says it wouldn't let me. So I have no idea what is going on with YouTube. Um, the uh, I think uh, personally, I think it's got to be a mistake with the algorithms. Something had to have been said that triggered the algorithms to to make that happen. But I mean, we didn't. Yesterday it was pure Bible stuff. We didn't talk politics. We didn't talk. We didn't mention. I I have no idea what could have triggered it. You guys are getting too big. Yeah, that could be it too. Yeah. How you know? Because we've had um, some of the, a lot of the older videos have gone really viral. We got like we we, we got one hundred and eighty eight views, one hundred eighty eight thousand views in the last twenty eight days. Wow! And that's what we said. We're, it really is kind of intimidating. And uh, Hal's like, I'll bet you there, YouTube's still letting you know. Hey, you know, yeah. you're you're yeah. Remember, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I have I have no idea. Um, uh, the um, other than that, uh, we we prayed for uh, you know a lot of folks online. Uh, we prayed for Randy and Ellen and their son Peter with cancer. He passed away this morning at seven, uh, so I know people were wanting updates on that. Uh, Fred and Gwen are with them now, but keep Randy and Ellen in your prayers. Beyond that, I got a lot of happy stuff too beneath the video. Uh, we got we got links to all kinds of good stuff, including Josh Martin Strelecki's church page on church channel on youtube his church's website i gotta say here's a here's a compliment nobody ever gives you've got great taste in web design like it's classy it's clean it looks good like that's like that's a talent for i'll you, say i'll take it appreciate it. uh supply of grace your church website i think it looks great you know can, unless, I, can unless, I put an ad out if anyone wants to take it over they can take it over <laughs> uh, no my, my you know um uh, yeah, he's got good taste, don't you think? You know, you got you got good taste in wives too. You you, you really did well on that. Uh, One you got the Facebook page, uh, Josh's Holy Appetizer Podcast, which makes me hungry. Uh, that's good. awesome. Which way? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, what are you doing on the Holy Appetizer Podcast? What are you talking about there? Uh, I, those what, are, what's those, your thinking behind that? Well, that was that was from a guy in our church uh, that came up with the idea. I haven't been able to execute it as well, but he, he, uh, a shout out to Dan. He, um, he said, you know, everyone's doing this, these TikTok videos. He said, we should do, you should do a small little snippet of some kind of Bible teaching and give just, you know, a couple one liners. And right. I said, well, I don't you know, know if I can do that. So, you know what you could do. Uh, I saw, uh, we tried this for a period of time and it worked really well, but it's a lot of work. And it was, um, and I see, I've noticed like Paul Turner the second in Oshkosh is doing this, where he'll just, okay, you live stream something, after YouTube processes the video, you could download it, and then just do, just upload snippets of your oh, okay. uh, audio from your, from your, like your favorite parts of your sermons. Like uh, you could just take the audio from that or portions of those sermons and then, you know, I don't think I can do that. That's, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work, I admit. Um. I, but yeah, that's what the the holy appetizers just. They're supposed to be small answers to you know the questions and get them out there. Uh, there's I have a uh, there's a thing that says see also and then um, and then uh, uh, it takes you to a bunch of other stuff Josh has done in the past. And you were on the radio once, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, we had a radio show. You had a radio show. Yeah, rightly dividing the word. Uh, and this was like I guess ten years ago, maybe yeah. something like that. Yeah. You did you actually go to a radio station and sit in front of the big? Yeah, okay. No, I just got uh, one of our elders works at the the radio station, and so he he hooked me up with a what mic I should get and those kind of things. And I would just record it and then send it in. Oh, you just did it at home and sent it yeah. in. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, he still works there, and I, I'll do. You know, he invites me in. In fact, he just texted me and said, "Hey, you haven't been in a while." 
let's do yeah. it. Let's do yeah, 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 yeah. So he has his own show from five to six or four to six. My grand, you know, I grew up in Springfield, Ohio. Grace Church there. Uh, Marv Wiseman still there. Um, and my grandfather was part owner of a radio station in Springfield. Okay. And so when I became a teenager, um, I was huge in I had f- huge into politics at the time because I just was just learning it, loving it, you know, yeah. understanding it for the first time in my life. Yeah. And but I was but I, I had a bigger. Um, what really lit my fire was things that differ and all the books yeah. of Stam I just devoured them yeah. you know so did Grandpa I. was like so and th- by that time then we moved down here and my grandfather was on a kick of um, he's like why don't you why don't you come back up to Springfield Ohio and I'll put you on the radio station we'll give you half an hour and uh, you can talk about politics and grace and stuff I'm like there's no way I'm going to leave Florida ever and uh, Grandpa was like well what if God wants you to come back to Springfield <laughs> I'm like Grandpa Show me a verse in the Bible that says Joel, God wants Joel to go to Springfield, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and go teach on the radio station. Yeah. No, I don't see that anywhere. Yeah. I see God saying, you know, whatever it is you do, do all to the glory of my son. That's what I see God saying. Amen. His will is in, in this book, and there's no verse about me being on the radio. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't that didn't stop him too well. So we have that in connection. I never did I never did do it. This is about the next best thing. Yeah. I think this is uh, Oh, awesome. this is great. Yeah. yeah. Um <clears throat> I've got a bunch of links also beneath the video to uh, play uh, Randy, uh, Randy White's uh, Dispensational Publishing House. You can get one of these books. Josh has one. I wrote all over it already. You did? I drew pictures. Oh, I was yeah. going to do it live. Yeah. Oh, gonna... sorry, dude. Oh, no, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, I went with the old joke. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. I was you. like, I don't care what they say, man. You're beautiful. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so, so check this out. This is about what, what, what I'm all about, about people understanding who they are in Christ, understanding dead, buried, risen with him, understanding that you are, the old Jew is gone forever. You are literally freed from the power of sin and understanding that you're freed from the power of sin empowers you to have that victory over sin. Reckoning that truth, a reality in your life, is what gives you the empowerment to have victory because all it's a matter of choice now as a believer. <coughs> I beg you to, to, and if you don't, if you aren't able to get the book, you can go to our website and uh, download a free PDF of it. I, want, I'm, I care more about the doctrine than I do about the money. Uh, we also have a link to a page on our website where you could financially support us uh, online through PayPal or send a check or money order to the church, payable to the church. I looked around on your website. Is there a place where people can donate to you online? Uh-huh. Uh, all right. It's the top right corner. It's got its own little special box. Top right corner. How did I miss that? Okay. Uh, support Josh Strelecki also. This guy I love. Um uh, he is. This uh, is a big deal. Oh, Grace Giving, Grace Giving. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very. Yeah, uh, it was a, a bucket list dream for me ever since I read Things That Differ. Yeah. Actually, and frankly, uh, I think uh, this subject's more interesting than Right Division. I, I, this is like to me top of the oh, gospel number one, identification number two. Uh, for me, number three would have to be predestination. I love that doctrine. Amen. Uh, predestination rocked my boat. Well, you're, you're um, just in Pauline order. <laughs> and then somewhere down the list for me is right division somewhere. But <laughs> well, that's that's, I mean, that's Romans one through eight right there. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, and then after that, you, yeah, right in Romans yeah. nine and ten. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Uh, uh, and then uh, there's links beneath the video to all kinds of articles, too. I've got some uh, great articles. Uh, uh, Josh Trelecki runs the Supply of Grace website, does it really well. Hal has a new article call- about all things work together for good. He just That's a phenomenal article, classic. And then there's a whole series of articles that Sean Brasso does uh, on his website, a series on understanding, understanding your purpose, understanding right division. I liked it. I liked it. Uh, then there's a, a few videos after that also, so check it all out. Uh, got to see who's in the house. And I'm going to skim through this morning and then um, see if we can get to the questions. Hey, we got Larry Hines. How you doing, brother? Chris Nelson, my mad bad back brother out there in Utah. Damon Chen goes to Kevin Hobbs' church. You've seen uh, Kevin Hobbs, haven't you? I have. Uh, yep. I love that man. Uh, okay, so Damon has a question. He okay. says, Pastor Joel, can you please explain this verse? Why does it say, for all men have not faith, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith? Second Thessalonians 3.2. 
Well, Josh and I don't know. I'm sure um, Michelle does. Second uh, Thessalonians three two. Uh, let me get my. I gotta get my Bible over here. Second Thessalonians three two. You um you use a Bible program uh, when you when you prepare. I do. Uh, do. What what kind of program do you use? I use two. I use uh, I use eSword. It's probably the the best one I, that I that I like. Even I, and I got the the free version of Logos logos. Yep. Yeah. How do you yeah. like that? I've never used it. Yeah, I like it because you can um, uh, you can take your documents and you can put them into the program. Yep. And you have your own personal books in there. Yeah. And so uh, I like that being able to do that, but. Um, all right, so we have, um, let me just give the context here. And the question is about all men have not faith. Um, uh, we'll start in verse 1. He's, he says, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. That's, now, that is the way Paul expresses that there is not something that we ever, ever really say. We don't ever talk about you know, glory, that the word of God, the, that the word of the Lord may be glorified. You know, yeah. uh, we talk about glorifying the Lord, but we never talk about oh, how we'd love to see the word glorified in you. Right. You know, that's that's unusual. Uh, but he says that the word that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith, but. The Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Uh, I suspect here, um, and I, you tell me what you think, and then we'll get to Michelle and get the right answer. Uh, you know, when he, it seems to me that all men have not faith. Is does, he says it that way as a way of contrasting? But the Lord is faithful. You know, he's basically saying not all men have faith. You know, but the Lord is always faithful. It's just designed to be a contrast between, uh, you know, lack of faithfulness in mankind and the perfect unwavering faithfulness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he adds even more good news, sort of, sort of piles it on, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Do you like that okay, Josh? Would you add anything Absolutely. to that? Um, I think, I know it sounds weird, and I know it's like a weird expression, but he kind of goes that route just so he could say, but the Lord is faithful. Just a nice little, nice little contrast there between wicked men and the Lord Jesus Christ. Does that get Michelle? Is that okay? Michelle says okay. Too. All right. I um, Romans fifteen. He he says something similar too in verse thirty. He says, "Now I beseech you, brethren, for uh, the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, and for the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me, yep. that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea, and that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints." And he kind of goes on. Yeah. Some of those, I wonder if it's it's. Um, uh, kind of like uh, an apostolic point to it in the sense of uh, Paul's been committed this ministry and message and for him to go out and to, yeah. and to do it yeah. and, and to pray for him that he would be delivered from these, you know, because ultimately he's not, right? right. Ultimately he right. isn't delivered from I don't remember. these unreasonable and wicked men. Yeah, I don't... Um that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea, and my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted the saints. Well, I don't, I don't remember. I know I preached on that years ago, but I can't remember the whole Judea reference. Uh, well, that's okay. We got Jerry Weinhausen in the house. How you doing, brother? Hey, Damon. I hope that's okay. I hope you like that answer. Uh, at least you felt like you got your money's worth. Uh, J.K. said, "Hey, Lori loves green in the house. Our sweet Alabama sister. How you doing?" And you know what the, kills me about losing that podcast yesterday is so we had Australia in there. Really, we had um, we had Malay people from Malaysia. It was Mike was just like after it was over, he was like, "This was epic." We had I couldn't believe the people we yeah. had on there. Um, Malaysia and Australia. That's awesome. Um, uh, so JK is in the house. How you doing? Hey, you got Carl Coach. You know Carl in Norway. I know, I know of him. Yeah, Carl says hello. Uh, hey, Carl. Uh, Revelation two twenty two uh, tells us clearly whom God will cast into the great into great tribulation, and the description does not fit us. Uh, if God will spare them if they repent, why would God put us who are in Christ through it? What a great point! Love that. Uh, that was actually that kind of 
<laughs> pardon me. <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've brought breakfast in for the Strelecki's, and I'm still burping. Uh, the uh, one of my too. favorite. If you ever read uh, Bollinger's commentary on Revelation, my complaint, my one complaint about Bollinger is that he pretty much for every verse said, this is clearly why it's not written to the church, you know? Like, I'm like, you're spending half your book explaining why it's not. The first time you made that point was good enough for me. I wanted more exegesis on the verses. That was my big complaint about Rollinger. But yeah, uh, I will lay 10 to 1. Bollinger makes that same point in his commentary. Um, clearly not written for the church. The church, is, the church is nowhere to be seen in that. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm actually a little bit nervous because... Um, the next series we're doing, I'm doing. Um, yeah, you're done with angels. I'm done with angels, and I'm going to do end of the world in chronological order for a variety of reasons. It was a request. Um, end times is a weakness for me, yeah. uh, and I need to know better before you know to answer questions on the podcast. I love it. Wait, so it's a weakness for you, but you're gonna you're uh, gonna yeah, study it's a it. challenge. Uh, yeah, I like, I like challenges. I bet, you, I I'll bet you do too. Yeah, yeah you like something yeah. challenges you, which yeah. is why I'm preaching what I'm preaching on Sunday because it's a challenge. <laughs> I'd explain that, you know, and the yeah. sea bears. Um, but yeah, so it's a challenge for me, and I'm struggling with some of it. I admit, and I'm asking lots of questions to everybody. But uh, remind me again. I know I've asked you this before. I actually have two questions for you. One, do you think there's a gap after the rapture? Yes or no, and why would you say that? And uh, when do you think the day of the Lord begins? So do you think there's a gap after the rapture? Have you uh, had the time to study that out? Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, it's one of those things when, you know, you, you, when you're asked a question, you go off of, you know, your current understanding, but you could have studied that out years ago. You know? <laughs> I mean, obviously you keep reading through the, you know, I'm reading through the Bible, but I haven't, you know, set my, yeah. my attention on it. But uh, I do believe there's a gap afterwards. Uh, the reason why I believe that is some things in Daniel, um, Daniel 11, when you, you get to the point where you get the, uh, the third king in the north, I think it is. Yeah. Um, where yeah, he, Syria, I think. Yeah. yeah. And he, yeah. that guy is the, the man of sin. Um, he's the Antichrist. So you kind of go backwards from that. And, and there's obviously something happening during that time. Mm -hmm. So for those events to transpire, I believe that there's a gap. In other words, I don't think that there those things were fulfilled in my present understanding right um and then you know you then you go forward and so the the covenant of peace he signs that's the seven years yeah and so the day of the lord you know i've always uh, i've come to understand it and heard it taught and, and viewed it is um that you know you, you kind of got the different nuances that it kind of starts with the the rapture yeah, yeah. in the heavenly places and then he kind of he's 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 you got the judgment seat of Christ, but then he starts making his way down kind of thing. And, and then you have the great and notable, terrible day yeah, of the Lord when he right. actually is here. That's right. Uh, and so, so I'm uh, in a dilemma yes. about the day of the Lord because Fred and Hal would say it starts at the rapture. Okay. And, uh, David and Brian would say, no, it starts at the midway point. Okay. Uh, I was talking to Charlie about it yesterday. I wanted to know what he thought also. And uh, for us, the more interesting question was, when does it end? Because yeah. it actually seems to go all through the uh, uh, through the millennium and uh, and the Great White Throne. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so I'm a little nervous about that because uh, I'm going to get it from one one corner of grace when I <laughs> when I preach it. All in love. Yeah, you know, all in love. But you know, I've been I, you know when David interrogates you, it's kind of you, you feel like you're in a deposition. You know. <laughs> we haven't gotten there in our relationship yet. Oh man! I look forward to it. That's what Julius we. That's like what we Ann, need. That's, that's what we need yeah. more. <laughs> yeah. So that makes me nervous, and um, uh, the whole gap thing. I don't think anybody's going to care one way or another uh, what what I would um, what the position well, what would you, be. Do you, where 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 um, are you at right now? Uh, <laughs> Ever since I came back to the Lord, um, and I have even yeah. become aware of that idea, I've been 50-50 yeah. on it. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, it's not nothing to get excited about or get upset about because there are gaps in prophecy. Right. We're living in one, for right. one thing. Yeah. You know, and so having seen, saying there's a gap in prophecy is not a big deal. I was studying the last couple of weeks, Daniel 9. I says, I, I'm questioning whether or not there was a gap in verses 26 and 27 during the Lord's earthly ministry, you know, and then I found that... Uh, like a couple commentaries, and then I heard Jordan say that he saw a gap there too. Praise the Lord for that. 
I don't have to, at least I don't have to get in trouble with him on that message. You know, there's one. I, the, the way and then he there says was the gap of the Lord Jesus Christ when he read uh, what read out of Isaiah 61 yeah. when, when he started his ministry. Right. Yeah. yeah he stops a, it. He stopped in the middle of the verse, and there's a gap after the after the comma. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The, so Daniel, gaps are not a big deal. Daniel 9:24. If if you read that very particularly, I think it gives space for gaps. So when he says yeah, yeah. seventy weeks are determined upon thy people right. and upon thy holy city, right? He's not talking about necessarily the the world, what's going on at the world at large, right? But what's specifically happening with his people um, and his, and his right. city? Yeah, and you you get to like verse twenty seven, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week. He shall cause the sacrifice. So you get the sense that, all right, the 70th week is going to begin with this confirmation of the covenant, yeah. you know, and then you're going to have that, and then you already have that halfway point, and, and then you have the consummation at the end, right. of the end of the verse. So I feel like, you you know, you can you absolutely make a case for a gap in that, and, yeah. but, you know, I, I'm slow getting my head around it. I'll probably ask you more questions this afternoon, because... Well, let's do it. <laughs> I, won't make, I won't make public, but... Uh, uh, so you think the... So let me get this. So you think there there is definitely a gap after... After the rapture, and yeah, you I think, think so. the day of the Lord begins at the at the rapture also, or do you think that it starts at the midway point, or do you, uh, does it not matter to you? Because I'm and that one, I am definitely leaning towards beginning at the rapture. You know, you have those references. I was growing up was always confused about the references to the day of the Lord in Paul's epistles. Because I'm like, well, that's, you know, right, second. I right, always think, well, that's right. second coming, and I never could figure out those right. verses. And Hal and Fred were like, no, 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 that's. Day of the Lord and Day of Christ could be used yeah, interchangeably right. because, you know, the one ends, you know, Day of Christ is the beginning of the Day of the Lord, you know. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that makes perfect sense to me. Um, so I've always held that view. So it was, so then, you know, I've, I'm, I'm kind of growing up and getting acquainted with everything that's going on. And I come across David and Brian's book on Day of the Lord. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh man. So uh, uh, you don't feel passionate one way or another about the Day of the Lord? No, I think, you know, sometimes... Maybe I won't say it because it's probably an opt out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think sometimes we might get caught up in 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 specifically identifying a period of time or whatever right. for what it is, and and yet I get it because the right. scripture does that. Right. But I think uh, you know to what you and Charlie made mention of when is the end, but also what are the details. I think sometimes when I think about the day of the Lord, I automatically equate it to the tribulation, the judgments that are I happening do too. down I here. I do too. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, I, you know, they might have some unraveling I, uh, to do. Yeah. Well, we have, uh, we have people here that we're just like, don't major on the minors. Yeah. That's what grace preachers do way too much. Well, and to get to the point where you're going to divide over it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, Lori says, welcome Josh and the gang. That's, that sounds like a Thank cool you. cool group, music group, Josh and the gang. Uh, Larry Hines says, and it's all because of God's amazing grace, all because on Calvary's cross he took my place, and someday, some glorious morning, I will see him face to face, all because of God's amazing grace. Amen. Amen. Love that. J.K. says, Revelation 2.11 proves the... Seven churches in Revelation are not the body of Christ, totally. It doesn't make sense for God to warn us who are already saved that there is a possibility of being hurt by the second death. Now, here's a question I have for you. Do you think those seven churches existed at the time of the writing, or they are intended for seven future churches? Yes. <laughs> I, You've been uh, watching how too much, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it though, because sometimes you're like, yeah. <laughs> well, the, the one thing, those seven churches, they're 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 lined up with the the menorah candle, right? The the seven yeah, golden candlesticks. Candle right. I mean, that's all prophetic. That's in right. the tabernacle. That's right. in the temple. Um, and so those are those are prophetic churches there. And um, as far as you know, there was one thing that I didn't even know it was a, a thinking process out there, but I was when I was, this was one that I kind of came up originally. A lot of my, what I understand is an original. I, you know, I learned it from so many Exactly, people. me too. Nothing but then, you, and then yeah. you learn it's exactly. out there. It's been there before. Yeah, which is exactly. kind of good, good yeah. as well. But when Paul's going in Acts, when Paul's traveling all, and he can't go into Asia, and he can't go north, and he, there's just this sliver. Hey, right. He goes right. over Acts to, Acts 16, on the second apostolic journey, the Holy Spirit yes. prevented him from going into Asia. Yeah, right. and that, I think that's right. really interesting to consider in regards to what was right. most likely or could have been taking right. place. Right. But well, that could be 
speculation. Make right. sure that well, I say that. There's that you know that's, that's got to be in the word for a reason. Yeah. And uh, so I'm I'm on board with how how would say that the Holy Spirit prevented Paul from going into Asia because all those seven churches were in Asia, yeah. and this and God was wanting to deliver those messages to those seven churches before Paul would go in there and turn that region upside down with the gospel of grace. That makes sense to me. Uh, but I'm open to other ideas too. So to me, if you're going to say that there are seven future churches only. Uh, I, I need an explanation as to why he was not allowed to go into Asia during that second apostolic journey. What changed from his second apostolic journey to his third apostolic journey such that he would, would have been allowed to go into Asia? The only answer I can, I can think of is that those messages were delivered to those seven churches at the time. Right. Now, I could be totally wrong, and I'm, right. I'm open right. to other thoughts. I'm right. not, uh, you know, I'm not hard... Um, dogmatic about it, but yep. uh, that's just a, a view that makes sense to me. Well, I think one thing that we have to consider too is, you know, from God's perspective, when you have the whole dispensational change and things like that, you're, yeah. you're talking about completing the Word of God as well. Right. And so uh, he's not completing the Word of God after the rapture. Right. It's already complete. He's using what he already did. So he's he's starting one thing and finishing yeah. In another sense, yeah. the other thing, although Israel's yeah. program isn't finished, he's yeah. finishing the the revelation of it. Yes. You know? yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's a that's a pretty uh, awesome thought. We got uh, love that. Uh, we got Vicky Bender in the house. How hey, you Vicky. doing? Hello, Joel, Josh, and beautiful family. Well, she's clearly seen your family before. Yeah, we um, we know Vicky well. We're really uh, for Lisa her. Jameson is in the house. How you doing? Great to hey, see Lisa. you. We got Kay Dico. Uh, awesome to have you here. Ludus down there we, in Puerto Rico. We, we got to get. Have, have you ever met Lisa? Uh, Jameson? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I have. I've never I met I her. I don't get out much. She's, <laughs> well, I've never met her either, but she's, you know, she's, she's got a, a wonderful ministry where she goes out. Well, at least this is what I've picked up. I've never talked to her, but where she likes and shares people's Facebook. Oh, and you nice. get all She shares it, and I don't know how she does it, but it's like 50 shares. Wow. And you're just like, wow, that's, that's pretty neat. So yeah, she's got I a need, wonderful ministry to get the message out. Through, we, so through we that. need to get in Lisa Jameson's good graces so we can promote. Well, <laughs> the, uh, that's uh, that's, that's really, really awesome. Yeah. Hey, hey, Lisa, where do you live? <laughs> um, the, um, Vicki Bender, she go to your church? No, she's down in uh, she's down in Illinois, but we know her, we know okay. her really well. All right. yeah, she comes out to our conferences and All right. Uh, we got Larry Hines says Joel the gentleman in the chat yesterday from Australia. I think uh, he is a student of John V Weekly Bible Study. No, oh, oh can you believe that name? Australia? Somebody in Australia, oh, yeah. listening to John Verstegen in California. That's crazy. Yeah, I heard of a whole group that he's leading. From Australia, I love I love Verstegen. I've not met him yet. Uh, one of these days, that's that's a bucket list thing for me. Yeah, I wish you know we were down there and he was there, and I didn't I didn't I would love to talk to him. But. Uh, I was going to go up in, in April, uh, but then Jordan uh, asked Hal to be on that panel, which is great because Hal is that I mean he is in his element when yeah. he's doing something like that, which is why he's so good here. But uh, it's I just I'm two of us can't be away yeah. you know I had to keep the church running but one of these days I'm going up there yeah. and I'm going to just hug those guys I really want to meet Steve Ross in person and Ted Fellows would love to meet John Verstegen all yeah. the guys I, I love them dearly uh, so it's probably good that I wait and kind of curb my passions about how much I love them and uh, <laughs> so I won't embarrass them too much when I'm up there uh, John Verstegen you know um, I remember uh, he, I love the way he interacts with his people when he preaches. Uh, but then in his in the conferences, he's. I, I always tell Hal he's got range. Yeah. The guy the guy can belt it out, and then he'll get really quiet, you know. Yeah. And then he'll he'll say something really insightful, and then give you that pause, give you a chance to think about it. Yeah. Like he's got range. Yeah. You know. There's some the it's it's good the way he's not droll. He's you know up and down. Um, but I love, um, let me ask you this. I remember John, uh, Verstegen uh, saying years ago, um, he said, do you think the um, Satan had an antichrist ready to go at Pentecost? Because you have, because Satan didn't know that there was going to be an interruption of the prophetic program, and you have Peter up there going, this is that, was spoken by the prophet Joel. Uh, he he kind of threw that question out there. I don't remember if he ever answered it, and, I've, and I always found that fascinating. And I can't help but wonder if Satan always has an antichrist ready to go because he doesn't know when the age of grace is going to going to end. And the the seventieth week 
you know, starts pretty quick. Right. Um, well, I guess unless there's a gap. So maybe that'll <laughs> give him 30 years to pick a good candidate to be the Antichrist. But yeah. Um, do you think Satan had an Antichrist ready to go at Pentecost? Or do you think there's only one Antichrist? God was always had in mind that one person. And I don't know. Yes. <laughs> we, got, uh, <laughs> we got Eli Stewart in the house. Um, no, you do really well. You know who's really great at dodging? Jordan. <laughs> if you, could, you bring up a co really controversial thing, I, you know, he'll, he'll be like, yeah, sure. Well, there might be some wisdom in that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think there is, yeah. Uh, I one time asked him about... Some um, people are, you know, just, it, it's... Um, you, George, you say one thing, you say it wrong, and him, it's going to, you know, you could yeah. be looking at a PR nightmare. Yeah. Or, you know, something going and I don't think, you know... I. You know, having a few conversations with with Brother Jordan, oh, and I don't yeah. think he's he really you know cares too he much. He doesn't about, care too much about. I think it's kind of a, a shepherding thing, you know, yeah. like you said. Yeah, keep you you got to keep your on mind the on, on the. Yeah, yeah you yeah. don't. I don't major on the minors. Uh, hey, we got Cliff Matthews in the house. You steep, rugged Cliff. How you doing, brother? He hey, says Cliff. so epic. Uh, too bad I've uh, got to step out. It's great having you here. He says, uh, Josh, I love truly love you, bro. Uh, love you too, bro. The, uh, and the, even still, every once in a while, Cliff will send me links. That you got to see what Josh did, you know, the other day. It's just awesome, you know. <laughs> when Josh is on fire, you know, there's there's nobody better. Uh, he's as good as everybody. Um, uh, what else do we have here? Let me let me get through some of these. We got uh, Lori Howell in the house. So good to see you, Jake Holdsworth. Here, how you doing, my dear uh, uh, bearded brother? Hey, you could you could go you could have a go bald and have a big beard have you seen that's kind of a thing now yeah, and, and then that's... little kids would say like your hair's upside down <laughs> you know do you ever have you ever done a beard no i think i think i let too many people make comments about it so i don't do it <laughs> <laughs> and it gets to me does michelle like beards would you tolerate a beard yeah 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 I, have you ever well, has he ever done this before has he ever done a beard before yeah, really? My dad, does. dad? Yeah, You know, I, I can't get past the itching part. Oh, I know. Me too. I yeah. can't. So I'm like, oh, yeah. this is too much for me. <laughs> it's coming off. I'll, sometimes I'll leave. Yeah, it bugs me. Well, I hate it when you get the little whiskers on the side of your mouth, yeah. you know, and you can feel it when you're, yeah. you, or you, and then the first time you start to get food actually caught in your whiskers, you just, I'm just like, that's gross. I'm going to save it all. You know? <laughs> I can't deal with that. Yeah. Um, so I, it would irritate me too much, I think. Yeah. Uh, Larry says, uh, listen, Irma says, um, Cliff says, dude, I was born and saved in Ajax, small world. Um, uh, in response to Larry talking about Ernie's testimony, Ernie's story. Um, what else do we have here? Let me go. Um, there was the, I just jumped on me. There was Charlotte was somewhere. Where's she at? Um, uh, looking up grace and peace, Joel and Josh and all our friends, Charlotte Allman. Awesome having you here. Hi, Charlotte. Um, uh, uh, Vicky says it's too hard to listen and talk at the same time. I have that problem, too. Uh, and I do a podcast. Uh, but I love being here in person with you all. We love you dearly. Uh, we got Persis in the house. Sweet, beautiful Persis. How I love you. Have you did you meet her up in Chicago? Um, I don't think so. Grandma, she is the, uh, the uh, Charlie's kids are her adopted grandbabies. Uh, Grandma. I don't know if, I did. I don't um, know if we did. Uh, uh, Persis Shame says, uh, good morning, Joel and Josh and amazing saints. Ephesians 2, 5. Even when we were dead in sins, yeah. hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Well, here's... Now, now, see, this is why I would say I love identification, because 20, 30 years ago, I would have been going, well, what, and raised us up together, hath raised us up together, that's past tense. Yeah. How can we be raised up yeah. past tense if I'm still here in my sin-corrupted body? Yep. That makes no sense. That'd be the question I would have had yeah. 30 years ago. No, 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 no. You read this book, and you're going to be like, oh, this is one of the greatest verses ever. He hath raised us up together. Right. It is done. Death, yeah. burial, resurrection with Christ is already a done deal. I remember having lunch with someone from college, and I, we were talking about Romans 8. 
Yeah. And I said, yeah, I'm glorified. And he says, <laughs> oh, sure, you're glorified. And I said, well, that's what the, ver- that's what the verse says. Right, right, you know, right, I am, right. I'm glorified. I've been yeah. called and right. justified and, and glorified. So oh, I had like, I could not, I had the hardest time. I remember as a teenager with Philippians 3, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And then he said, and then you get into that next verse and uh, might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. I'm like, yeah. dude, what? Really, you, yeah. you're worried about the resurrection, and now I'm worried about the resurrection, and I don't, I don't get this. And yeah. well, how can this be if my if I'm already forgiven all all trespasses and and complete in Him? Why should I worry about attaining into the resurrection of the dead? I don't yeah. get it. Uh, oh, it makes perfect sense if you understand you are already dead, buried, and risen with Him. You know, mm-hmm. um, you and it's not about attaining into the resurrection of the dead. It's about it's about attaining the. Uh, it, get, it, appropriating the the fullness of that resurrection power you already have in Christ, mm-hmm. you know. Um, uh, yeah, love me some identification, man. Amen. Um, we got Bill Barons. Um, I met him. I met him in. Oh yeah, Chicago. did you? Yeah, in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah. I love me some Bill Barons. Yeah, uh, it was wonderful. Did you meet to Ted meet up there too? Um, I've met Ted before last year, and uh, you were we, up there we didn't last talk year. Too much. Yeah, this is the second year I went. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, really thankful. Very refreshed and uh, encouraged and edified. Great conversations. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'd be able to let Ted go. <laughs> <laughs> I love that man too much. I'm going to start harassing him about taking a vacation in Florida, too. First time I, I, I got to talk to Ted on the phone. Uh, well, it was, works. We're here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, you just don't know that we're not going to let you leave. That's the thing. That way that we got you down here, we're going to keep you for good. Uh, the first time I met I Ted. I think you would have a fight on your hands. <laughs> I'll win. <laughs> I, got, um, I got Ted on the phone, and, uh, and uh, I was like, dude, I love you like a monkey loves bananas. And Ted's like. I don't know what to do with that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. I hear you, Ted. I, I say him. the same thing. Oh, man, I love him. Um, and uh, Steve Ross is another favorite of mine. I've always loved him. I've loved his attitude, his tone, the humor he has, the humility. You know, mm-hmm. He had one joke. I To this day, I still steal from him where he was like you know if you get a flat tire it doesn't mean that god's mad at you it means you need to get triple a (laughs) okay simple but true (laughs) oh i love steve ross too much uh i told brian up front look i love i love you i love your dad a little bit more but i love you (laughs) um uh, let me see here. Uh, I got a message uh, blocked to day two, a message October 2020. Yeah. Uh, I had a friend this morning tell me, wonder if this might be the beginning of censorship for Christians, yeah. uh, the beginning of the end. I don't know. That's a possibility. Um, we have to, uh, and this is, uh, Brian and I talked about this about a year ago, two years ago, and this is why he's on Rumble. Rumble, yes. Yeah. Yep. And uh, we're still trying to decide what alt text. I, we actually have Odyssey, and uh, all of our messages get backed up on Odyssey automatically. Mm. It was an old um, library site, and um, you can back it up. Uh, depending upon, I think, like, the message has to be under an hour, and if it's, you know, if you have over 1,000 subscribers, then it, it'll automatically back up things that are longer than an hour, okay. something like that. Uh, but... Uh, Odyssey might be a good alternative uh, for people to get all of your messages backed up somewhere else. Um, that may I, be an some, There's a, some other Christian platforms out there that are doing their own live stream now. Yes, Randy, nice. uh, Randy White's got a new one. His son oh, really? started uh, Worshipfy, and um, his son's a real techie genius. Oh, kinda, wow. Kinda, kinda, um, I, I, I'd love to be on there, too. It's just, it's all work. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, yeah. Well, um, the cost for some of it, too. Uh, Persia says, uh, hi, Hal. Heard you were going away. Hope it's a vacation. That's right. Hal is, Hal is abandoning us. Uh, I have major abandonment issues between Mike and Hal. And uh, Hal's going to be gone for about a month. He's going to go. Uh, they're going to go visit uh, Marilyn's daughter and grandkids. Um, and uh, so they're very, very excited about that. So we're going to have um, Josh preaching on Sunday. Uh, he's going to preach the main service. You're going to... Um, what are you going to talk about on Sunday? Have you made up your mind? Yeah. 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 I'm going to talk about riches. Oh. I was wondering. I was wondering how uh, 
controversial. Like, like if I title my message like the prosperity gospel. Oh yeah, is, yeah, that, is that too much? Oh yeah, yeah. No, we, you well, know, we, you we know, can talk about. No, no, no. We're all about clickbait. Yeah. And so, oh, okay. If we, so everything okay. We, we're all about clickbait. Okay. So uh, there's no, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we're willing to Someone try just about anything. Teaching the, the, prosperity the prosperity guys. Message. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh yeah. 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 We'd be all we'll for talk that. About true prosperity. True. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, so most of the titles of the podcast is I, I'm always hoping it'll be good clickbait, but okay. some is some are some aren't. You know, yeah. uh, we're not experts at it. Well, well no, long shot. Yeah. no, you don't want to um, spend too much time in that. But um, yeah, 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 yeah. No, so uh, I, in fact, we'd I'd say the controversial, the more controversial, the better, okay. and we'll be we'll be we'll back you up a hundred percent. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's see here. We've got. Um, it's been one of my favorite topics uh, to look at the God's riches. Oh, I can't wait. You can talk as long as you want to. I don't care. Well, I, I really don't care. There's an hour for you, but you can go as long as you want. And I'm, you know, I just, I just don't. We'll, you keep going we'll until stay, you're we'll done. Stay you that. keep going until you're done, and you don't <laughs> stop until you're done. Period. Well, don't uh, care how long it is. They they have a problem with it. They can leave. <laughs> I want my full from Josh Trelecky sermon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Persa says that um, we could use uh, more Grace Radio programs uh, here near Chicago. Totally agree. Josh should be doing that. I won't do the face of radio joke. I've done that many times with Fred already. You know, three three <laughs> three messages is enough. Yeah. For right now, yeah. Oh, you do three messages a week? Yeah. Oh, uh, man. The, yeah. How, so, how, uh, and I'm, I'm, I meant to ask you, how long does it take you to prepare a message? Um, forever. Yeah. I heard yeah. One, one guy, I might have shared this before on the podcast, but I heard one pastor say, 10 minutes and 30 years. <laughs> I was like, I can definitely <laughs> yeah, bear yeah. witness to that. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. No, I mean, I try to, I, really, I try to spend as much as I, as much time as I can you know, I have, on a message. But. Josh has sent me photos of his Bible study process with the notes to the outlines and everything. Honestly, it looked like oh, that was <laughs> mathematical <laughs> equations. I mean, I thought he's like some Einstein. His, do you understand his method of preparation for a sermon? Have you seen him do this? Do you understand what he's doing? Because uh, I looked at that and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm looking at. It's like a scientific equation, you know? It was <laughs> now, now you'll embarrass me. Yeah, no, the it's, guys. It's, 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 well, I'm just saying it's phenomenal. I, I'm, I, me. I just, uh, you know, I have an outline, and then, I, and then I start working on the parts, and then. Well, uh, th for me, th that's kind of the first. I just, I break down the sentence, and then you know, Paul doesn't help me very much when he has a, a huge sentence. So now, when you think I just of have to break it down, when you think of your sermon, do you think of a structure? You're going to be like, okay, I'm going to start here. The middle part's going to be here, and I'm going to end it with this. I, I probably should more I, I when I that's that's kind of my outline when I break down a sentence yeah you just go through yeah, and I think that's probably probably my my con as well or my problem is because then I'm you know grace be to you okay well what's grace <laughs> be, be to you yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, start looking at those things and that's like four sermons right yeah. there you know? <laughs> exactly so you get it I totally get it <laughs> I, I, I take more time trying to figure out what I'm not going to teach yeah than sometimes yeah. what I what I am going to teach but. no I'm big into well I mean I had a uh, writing background before I came came back to the Lord and so I'm big into structure uh, so I love structure. Uh, but I, I always felt like you had, uh, you know, some good structure to your sermons because some guys are just all over the map. Yeah. They're talking about 500 million different things. Yeah. Yes, it's all connected in some way. Yeah. But you know, let's, let's just stick to the theme and the tone and the topic of whatever yeah. it is. And you're really good at that, I think. Um, well, I appreciate that. I probably can get much better at it. I have, um, like, there's some... You know, uh, I like, you know, you go to the classic structure. Uh, I remember Tom Bruchet did this once, and I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. You ask a question, and then you make them wait 45 minutes to get the answer, <laughs> you know? Yeah. All right, well, before we answer this question, let's go here, here go here, yeah. and here, and then give them the answer yeah. at the end. That way, there's, that way they're hanging on, and they're waiting to get the, the answer to the yeah. stupid question. Right? Yeah. 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 Uh, so you have a so you have a controversial verse. Well, I'm going to totally do this on Sunday. Got a controversial set of verses, and you're going to be like, "How do you explain this?" And then I'm going to do context for the entire chapter yeah. until we come to the end, yeah. where you know yeah. I, I do that a lot. It's pretty annoying. And then I notice too, like um, I have on a few occasions where, just as an experiment, 
um, and this was years ago. Philemon, you know, Philemon, I, I made the point is is a, structurally it's a, it's it is the first that. half is a perfect mirror to the second half, right? Yeah. So so you fold it in half and it's perfect. Well, you know, and, you, and the way Bollinger has the design for the structure, it's like a C, right? Yeah. Um, so I thought, well, I wonder if you could if that would actually work for a sermon. So I actually did a sermon, a couple of sermons where I'm like, okay, this is the beginning and this is the end, and the points are the same, and then I'm like, I'm going to go here. And and then the point before the ending is going to be this, and and I and I kept going until I had what maybe six different points, and yeah. it's, they all mirrored each other. Sure, that's neat. And uh, the people were perfectly happy with the message. Yeah, um, I like I like I like structure. I like experimenting with structure. Yeah. Sometimes I fail, you know, but. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I do, I do love a good structure. I love, and uh, David Reed will do that too. Okay, look, what's the? Here's a question. Well, let's, he has a logical progression when he's making his case, like yeah. he's like a closing argument to a trial. Well, he's, you know, he's an point attorney. Point A right? lead gives you to point B, which takes you to point C, and clearly, it, I mean, if you really think about it, obviously, clearly, <laughs> this is the, the answer, answer is point D, right? You know. Yeah. <laughs> Tabernacle means tent. <laughs> <laughs> How could it be anything other than that? Um, uh, hopefully they're not listening. They're busy uh, getting their new church ready. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, let me, all right, so let me get in here. Uh, Catherine Smith said, oh, Persis says comment. Well, okay, we got that radio program. We totally agree. Uh, there should be I think I think there should be a million podcasts I think you know I know there's like a billion podcasts out there I think uh, half a million should at least be grace yeah. there should be everybody all the man in, in a perfect world all of mankind would be screaming about his grace there should be grace churches on every corner uh, which is why we got plenty of room in Orlando down here for you guys although um, I forget who it was uh, was it Sue Ann somebody was telling me how they met a member of your church at a conference, okay, was it Tennessee? Oh yeah, and and, um, and so this, I think it was Sue Ann and just Ryan basically and said, "Don't remember who they were." This uh, was recently, Sue, yes, last couple this months. year, yeah. yeah, yeah. And Sue Ann, you know, they were talking about you and Josh, and they're just like, "Oh my God, we love Josh and Str- <laughs> you know Michelle so much." I'm like, "Yeah, but there's still plenty of room in Orlando for more Grace churches, like you know, on the other side of you know Orlando, something, you know." Uh, and they're like, no, they will never ever leave uh, Twin Cities. Um, the um, there was a point to that, and I can't remember what it was. Uh, um, That's okay. We, uh, we got K- Mr. KJB Believer in the house. How you doing? We got Grace for Grace in the house. Where's Josh from? He's is he a pastor? Uh, I think Josh was. Uh, you were born in a lab, weren't you? Uh, probably. <laughs> uh, what is Milwaukee. this? Huh? Milwaukee, Wisconsin. No kidding. Yeah. Oh, uh, no yeah. kidding. And then uh, second grade moved up to Michigan, the Upper yeah. Peninsula, and then for college, went to Minnesota, and that's where we reside. The uh, is that where you met met your wife? Yep. Yeah. College. Well, college was also um, your time away from the Lord too, if I remember right. We both had a falling away from the Lord, yeah. a bad period. Yeah. Uh, the two of us. Um, and actually, I think that was before you went to that college. I think yeah. you got kicked out of the other one or something. I, I left the other one. You left the other yeah. one. Yeah. 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 The first college I went to, uh, Finlandia University, uh, stayed there for about a semester, but got into things I shouldn't have. And then yeah. left. I got a DUI. No more of this. I, 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 I could probably one up you on the bad, yeah. the bad stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was probably about, I mean, I was always, I was kind of the goody two shoe in high school. You know, my friends, uh, decided to get into the, you know, party and scene, and so did I. But I was the I was the DD. You know, I was the one that the parents could trust. Yeah. And uh, but then for about two years stretch, I just. Yep. I just, you lost it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I've been there, done that. So. Um, did enough in two years for my whole what life. What did your What did your uh, What did your mom and dad do? What were they? For work. Yep. Um, my dad. For most of the time, he worked at a lot of different factories. Okay, he worked on uh, like mining equipment and things like that. Okay, and uh, but I then see, he so eventually got uh, he got a contract for the for uh, the mail route, mm. uh, delivering mail. So he loved that. He did that for quite a few times. They're retired now. My mom, she worked when we were at Miller. She worked at Miller Brewing Company, 
Uh, she worked for waste management. So your dad um, had a brilliant engineering mind, which is probably where jo- Josiah gets it from. It, yeah, he was kind of like that. Yeah, I, I don't know much actually. I know he a lot of assembly. Do you know much? Of, do you know how your dad came in the right division? Do you know how that happened? Just reading Paul, my gospel, just reading yeah. that. Yeah, and then he, yeah, well, he how did he started find studying things that differ, internet. And how did he find? Yeah, I just did a search. Wow. Yeah, yeah, oh, found, okay. Found a couple different resources, I think. And then, uh, yeah, I came across. Did you have a big family? Uh, just my sister and I. Okay. She's three years older. Yeah, okay. So, I was an only child. Okay. Yeah. The, um, so I had a lot of time on my hands to read. <laughs> um, uh, let me see here. Hey, we got Bob Picard in the house. How hey, you Bob. doing, brother? Uh, I love Bob's articles. You, you does have a great with job. Bob? Yeah. yeah, does a great yeah. job. Yeah, I love. We him. need more. Anyone want to contribute to a supply of grace? Let me know. Uh, or Joel, no. Uh, we got Rochelle on the. the hey, McQuillans. Yeah. Hey, Rochelle. Charlie. Uh, hey, look. I told. I- test. 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 Uh, I think it worked. Looks like it. I think it worked. Okay. Uh, I can't explain it. I think the devil is greatly opposed to uh, Josh being uh, in our church. He, we're saying a little too many good things. Uh, too much truth is being shared here. So we'll see, and we'll see if uh, YouTube actually approves of this <laughs> podcast. Um, we approve this message. <laughs> uh, all right, so. Now let me let me get through the live chat and then I'm gonna uh, I don't know if I have any other any other deeply probing spiritual questions to ask you here uh, and then we're gonna I'm gonna get um, get your wife and the kids on and see what uh, what else do we have here um, we had um, do you think we're getting close to the rapture. There's a question I have here. You think we're getting close? Do you look at some of this stuff like this yeah. wallet, mo- the you know, the tips in the hands and the digital? Actually, maybe talking about that yesterday is what got me in trouble. Uh, oh. Just, just, just stuff going on in the future about money not being money anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, know? I think there's a lot uh, of think, things happening. Do you think there. some of those things? Uh, is it possible to see trends that? Before the rapture happened, for things that'll be taking place after we're gone. I think so. Um, I, I, yeah, I think the the globalness of everything, you know, everything um, seems to be so yeah knit. It seems so unusual that the tyranny is global. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And the authoritarianism is global. Yeah. Uh, do you are you do you think do you think at all there may be hard times ahead of for us in terms of the food supply chain and issues economy and issues like that do you think much about that um i haven't much lately you know um i try to you know you know those things are coming you hear it here and there you know you got different people who are in it more um but you know the way that the way that i view things as far as scripture goes i mean we've 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 had it so well especially in this country for so long yep and uh, I, I think that it's it's hampered many Christians and many grace believers, um, and that not that of course you don't want anyone to suffer or experience right. hard times. I think that it, it, a, a good dose of it it would be right. good for us, and and I think it would manifest a lot of what we have in our mind and our heart. Yep. And that's what we should be doing all the time. And so these things are, even still, they're pretty minor. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be the famine people are saying it is. But I do think yeah. it'll be a hard time. And I'll bet you money it'll be good for the local churches. The grace yeah. churches are going to have each other's back. Yeah. It'll draw them together, yep. you know, support one I another. I sure hope so, yeah. Um, I'll, bet you, I'll bet you money, you know. Grace Church will be the heart of your life yep. uh, when it when uh, when we go if we go through a really hard time. It has happened too, you know. You had we had we saw people you know come to the church that hadn't been for quite some time, you know, after COVID. But right now that's done, and you right. know it's not kind of the same thing. It seems like and um, yeah, I, you know, I think yet you have a mentality out there where it's like you know buckle up, do it on your own as well. You know, and let's let's store up, let's save up, and not that there's no wisdom in that, but um, where yeah, there's not that community, 
and yet you know we have a, a community of believers that un- undoubtedly that will be there for each other if things get get tough i'm curious to know uh, fa- a, f- a favorite book outside of the bible anything under the sun oh man yeah i'd love to know what that might be a favorite yeah now uh, you might have to give me a couple minutes <laughs> um i can't remember any you have a favorite bible book is it whatever the one you're preaching at the time? <laughs> you're one of those guys? Yeah. yeah. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I really like uh, the book of Titus. Uh, really? Yeah, I like Titus. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really, really packed. Um, it has that, those good works of grace, yeah. you know. Yeah. But yeah, I really enjoy Ephesians right now. Yeah. I've been oh. enjoying 1 Corinthians too. Oh, man, those Corinthian epistles. I love them, but they're so long. Uh, and I, uh, but Second Corinthians, I think, is arguably the best book. You, if you're suffering, yeah. Second Corinthians is your book. Yeah, it's, really, because yep. everything actually, because all the eleven chapters leads up to Second Corinthians twelve. Yeah. You know, yeah. my grace is sufficient. Yeah. Everything leads up to that. Yep. Builds you up to that big reveal of the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. You know, yep. love that. Love well, that. Is a lot. whole introduction to the epistles telling you what oh, yeah. you get into. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. sufferings of Christ and. Um, I'm a Philemon junkie. I admit that. Um, Did you, guys, you and Charlie junkie. talk about that? Did you guys talk uh, about Philemon at all? Yes. Well, he came to Brian's conference. Um, yeah. And we talked. And and I knew Charlie was. Uh, he's that guy knows his Bible really well because we were. He's like, did you ever notice like Erastus and and Philemon is like arrested, but he's not arrested in chapter of, in Colossians four or something like that. Yeah. And I'm like. I'm like, dude, nobody besides me has ever noticed that. <laughs> uh, the fact that you're actually bringing that up, that's, uh, I can't believe you, you are, you really are a student of Philemon. Yeah. You can separate, you can tell the difference between the men and the boys with Philemon, because <laughs> uh, people that just sort of, uh, you know, pastors will give it a quick thought and do yeah. a couple of messages and be done with it. But then there, but if you spend months studying it, yeah. It'll it'll just open up to you things you never thought you'd see. Yeah. And clearly, uh, uh, McQuillan did the hard do work. You think, do you think that should only be for pastors, that kind of thing? No, yeah. no. I wasn't even. I didn't even want to preach when I was studying yeah. Philemon. It became my newest obsession, uh, and it was my first book that I ever studied on my own, which yeah. also became a thing, um, exciting thing for me. Well, and the, like the opening it up, the more you study something, the more opening it up. Oh, I know. I think sometimes you know I talk to you know pastors about that and yeah that's that's for everyone too you know yeah totally Just get in the word and oh, study totally. it's yeah. yeah yeah um you'd be surprised all of the little nuggets and the little things hidden in that Amen. book in that letter that letter is so short and yet it's so packed full of depths i you know uh i have a 600 page book at home on philemon and, and i yeah. i read that i disagreed with almost everything they said and i felt <laughs> like even with 600 pages you barely scratched the surface yeah. of that one epistle yeah you know it's it's really deep. Uh, I have um, a favorite book outside of the Bible. <laughs> I read, uh, well, I read a book recently by a Puritan. So don't hate me for that. I wouldn't hate you for okay, anything. Well, I just wanted. To, I don't okay. hate you for going to the Magic Kingdom okay. either. I don't, you know, <laughs> I don't hate you. I don't judge you at all. Um, <laughs> which, of course, uh, you know, I'll make sure you know if you're reading something like that. Yeah, you want to be careful. Yeah, exactly. You know, for, for me, going, you know, kind of going back and reading a lot of that Calvinism, it's for, I can just yeah, a, you can a see sentence. it. Yeah, okay. you know, I know what's yeah, you know, right. I know what's going on. Right, right. Um, but one of the things I've enjoyed uh, is 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 talking about those 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 good works and whether they have the right foundation for it. I don't know. You know, in some some cases, but I read a, a book called The Rare Jewel of Christian Contentment. Wow! Yeah, and it was it was from there was maybe one chapter where I was like, it was just like the Calvinist yeah. chapter. Yeah. It seemed like, yeah, uh, God's sovereignty and those kind of things. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but it was I thought it was it was really wow. good. Yeah, it was all about the you know Philippians four and so and those that kind of book things. is called the rare jewel of Christian contentment. Yeah, I don't know if that was what it was originally called, but that's what it's currently called uh, right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, by Jeremiah Burroughs. Okay. Burroughs, yeah. All right. You have a favorite book, Michelle? I, 
and, and Bible, yeah. Oh, she's such a. And, th- and I just no, say that because man. I haven't read this one yet. Oh man, I haven't read this yeah, one yet. Yeah, so yeah, well, uh, read it at night because it'll help you go to sleep. I'm sure. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> come on. Uh, actually, uh, I did my best to put as I much, read a couple. I, I read I a couple sentences, drama in there. Yeah, there was, was some. Really good. There was some. Uh, there's a, there's a, like a. Um, the, I'll start the paragraph with the conflict. These pastors have been saying this. Well, how can this be? Kind of thing, yeah. and then and then you spend the rest of the chapter basically <laughs> annihilating that argument. Yeah, <laughs> we had uh, like with the uh, old man. Uh, we had I had a debate with a certain pastor here. I will. Uh, he is in that book all over the place because of the things he said. Uh, and uh, we had a debate about the old man. I said the old man's dead, and he did a message that said the old man's alive. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And I'm like, how can he still be alive if he's crucified with Christ? Explain yeah. that to me. Yeah. So he got up behind the pulpit here and uh, basically said, well, the old man's still hanging on that cross. I'm like, what, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Well, why is he still hanging up there if you're dead, buried, and risen with Christ? That makes yeah. no... Don't get me started. He, uh, that may, but I do thank him in the beginning of the book <laughs> for all the material he gave me. Um, so, uh, the... Uh, uh, there was a couple of comments I had last week. I was like, I can't believe you had his name in the book. And I said, well, i got to thank him. Half of it's about him. You know, so. <laughs> um, um, let me see here. Per, uh, okay, so we got the Persis comment. I think uh, didn't I covered, uh, we, we were talking about Roselli. Oh, that's right. You need to come to Florida on vacation. But, um, and then we had the power outage, and, um, and I had to reboot the system in the back there, so I'm really sorry about that. Um, uh, let me see here. Um, so we got CBC Sartex rapture falling away reveal of of AC mid trib casting of Satan and cohorts out of heaven to earth aka the day of Christ great tribulation battle of Armageddon day of the Lord second return grace and peace <laughs> <laughs> love it uh, JK says is there another verse uh, besides Daniel nine twenty seven that talks about the Antichrist confirming the covenant with the, with many for one week okay no and I have a problem with that interpretation actually this, I'm going to I'm going to talk to Josh hmm. about that I have issues with Daniel nine and I'm I'm scared to death because if I go up against the against the narrative, um, I, I I fear I'm going to get in a lot of trouble. Uh, well, I'm going to get a lot of backlash, and I don't want to say anything without having a verse back it up. That's a big problem for me, uh, be, and, I'll, and for a variety of reasons. Like, um, but I'm um, I, I I could be wrong, and I need to talk to my pastors about it before I <laughs> open my mouth behind the pulpit. But yeah, I'm going to I'm going to ask you questions about Daniel nine. I'm excited. Um, so, uh, just, so JK, uh, th- I would agree, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Uh, because you know the the, the uh, day one of the of the tribulation, we all know, starts with the four horsemen of the apocalypse. There's a there's a, a saint here who uh, she's a big Revelation junkie. She thinks the four horsemen of the apocalypse is a basic overview of the entire tribulation, and it's the things that are going to occur throughout the tribulation. Uh, I think she's absolutely right, and um, so I will probably preach it that way. And but you know, from the very beginning, you got wars and rumors of wars. Where's the peace? You know, where's the peace? And, um, you know, the how pointed out that Second Thessalonians 2, when they say peace and safety, it's, it's their desire for peace and safety, not that they're going, ah, oh, peace and safety, it's so awesome. No, you'll never have that in the tribulation, ever. So the confirmation of the covenant is, is, um, is a big question I have. I, I've, I very much dislike the way a lot of people approach that uh, interpretation. Like in some of the commentaries I was reading had said, well, the Antichrist makes a covenant with Israel, and it's in this that he's going to have this agreement of peace with all these other nations and stuff. That's not what the verse says. The verse says confirm the covenant. You're, conf- you're confirming what's already been established. Um, and uh, so that may very well be why the people of Israel uh, have agreed to follow him. But I question whether that's the Antichrist. So I really don't know. I, I'm, um, maybe Josh will straighten me out after the, after the podcast today because I... Uh, I'm going to, um, uh, but I still have, uh, I've got about uh, 10 more uh, videos to listen to. I'm reading uh, Jack, is it Jack Hastings, that book, his book on Revelation? I'm reading that book. Uh, I read Bollinger uh, two summers ago, but I, I need to go back and reread that. So I'm still doing my homework. I don't know. That <laughs> would be my answer to that question. Um, and, and one of my questions would be, where can you, else, can you back it up? 
Uh, don't know about that either. CBS, CBC Sartex, uh, f- uh, setting affections on things above. That's right. Amen. Instead of go up, thou bald head, it's just look up, thou, thou bald head. <laughs> um, uh, look up. Uh, Lisa says she lives in Cadillac, Michigan. All right. You know where that's at? Cadillac, Michigan? Uh, okay. No, I don't. But that's Michigan. CBC uh, says hypotheticals are always iffy. Yep. And I'm very guilty of that. Uh, I, uh, Vicky says, uh, I've been learning with Josh since he began. He's an absolutely wonderful teacher, always giving us details and God's big plan. I love the way you put that. Love that. Um, uh, Grace for Grace said, did Pastor Ron Knight used to teach where Pastor Josh did? That's correct. Yep. Uh, I think so. Yeah, yep. He was there before me. Uh, we got Kate Anderson in the house. Uh, good morning, Saints from Roger and Kate. Love you. Um, um, let me see here. Grace for Grace says, I love Grace. Uh, Amy Stewart's in the house. Um, uh, Gerard Long out there in the Netherlands is in the house. How you doing? Great to see you. Um, uh, what else do we have here? Persis says the only worthwhile program we have is Brother Rick. <laughs> Good morning, Gerard. Um, uh, let's see here. We got David Garnett in the house. How you doing, brother? Uh, Jerry Winehouse and says, uh, Joel, you captured my uh, thoughts on David's uh, case building technique to prove a doctrine. Uh, is he a member of the Mensa Society? If not, he belongs. He's a lawyer, dude. <laughs> That's why it's got to be logical. Everything's got to be in its place, you know. Uh, Bob Picard says the actual putting together of a message is the least work. It's the it's a combination of reading, studying, and also practical application. So much of the churches make a practical application the goal of the message. Right. Um, in fact, um. I don't know. I write. I write all my messages out. I hate. I um. I've. That's the way I've always been all my life. I need to think it through, write it out, um, and I need to really. In How order long to, does that take you? Um. Uh, I can. I. I can. So is that the last step? I could sneeze a thousand words. Yeah. I mean, literally, it's like nothing to me. Yeah. I've been writing all my life. I. I was. Did, I did nothing but writing when I was at uh, at, at the cruise line. Okay. And uh, so uh, two messages a week, uh, you know, you're looking at about 10,000 words a week, plus yeah. an article for Supply Grace. Yeah. And then I'm also working on the book. So I don't, I don't know any other way. I don't know how to, op- I can't operate any other way. Yeah. Uh, so when the really hard questions come in the podcast, I'll just pull up an old outline and I yeah. can read it. You know? Yeah. Uh, I just, I just, I can't. When I study, you have all these amazing things you discover that you want to share. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to remember it all unless yeah. I write it all down. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yep. And then when I write it down, I know I already know. Um, and this is not—it's not the way to do it. And nobody would ever recommend it. But I, you know, if I write it down, then I know. Okay, I got 4,500 words, 5,000 words. Okay, it's going to be about 45, 50 minutes. I already know. I've cut the fat. I've cut the bird walking. I've cut, you know, and yeah. I'm, and I know. I know what the ending's going to be. I always want to know what the ending is, and I know where I'm going, yeah. and I'm trying to get there. Yeah. You know, um, so that's, that's really just good. me. But so it, it just managed to work out for me because you get a question on the podcast, and I'm like, <laughs> I preached about that three years ago, and I can't remember what I said. Well, yeah. You know, yeah. And so, I, so then I can just go pull up the outline and just kind of skim through and go, oh, I remember what that was. Oh, yeah. that's right. You know. Um, it's like that because I, I you can't remember everything you study. Yeah, you, know? you don't. Yeah, <laughs> I'm under having a conversation about both in positive and negative negative situations about something you taught years ago. Uh, yeah, or that's happened. It's like, well, my my understanding, you know, has has changed. It, it yeah, evolves, it yeah, grows. and then I'll look at some of those old outlines and I'm like, Joel, you're the biggest idiot that ever was. Where did <laughs> right? you ever yeah. come up with that? Yeah. How did you say that? Yeah. Um, Gerard says, a song of degrees of David, Psalm 122, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, we got Josh, uh, Roger uh, Yeager, a beautiful brother. Josh, my City League baseball career extended into my 50s where, uh, where'd you go, Roger? Okay, well, very, very good. Praise the Lord for that. <laughs> <laughs> I command the spirit of buffering to leave it in Jesus' name. Amen. Jerry, exactly. Uh, you got your wish. I had to do an exorcism in the sound booth. That's how we got back on. Um, CBC says we aren't getting uh, further from the rapture. We aren't getting uh, further away from the rapture for sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> yep, totally. Uh, what else do we have here? Satan and his plan of evil, Keith Blades. Yep, good book. Uh, Keith Blades needed an editor. I'll say that much. The book, he did too, like you get to the end of a chapter and he's like, well, the next chapter we're going to talk about this. I'm like, just, just end it. And we're, I'm going to find out what you're going to talk about when I get to the next chapter. All I'm going to do is turn the page, and I'm going to see the next chapter, you know? Yeah, he had that uh, uh, he, teacher mode. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's good for a sermon. Yeah. Next week, we're going to talk about this. That yeah. works. But you don't do that at the end. I'm like, dude, stop. Um, and I wanted his book to go all the way to the end of it all. You know, yeah. all, just take it all the way to the end. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I love. I love um, tell him what you're gonna tell him. Tell him what you're gonna tell him, and then tell him what you told him. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't buy that at all. I, I've always. We, uh, all of us writers, we always hate that. No, put the question in their mind, make them wait and wait and wait, wait. to get the answer. <laughs> That's the way him. you do it. Right. Right. And I told Brian and David, I was like, uh, you know, because they'll show like a. They had a couple of books they were working on, um, and uh, I'm like, and they'll say in the introduction, we're going to make the case that, and I'm like, don't do it. Yeah. Put the question out there. How do you answer this? And then make the people turn the pages. Yeah. That's how it works in good fiction. You know, you put a question out there and you kind of toy with the with the reader, yeah. and and that's how you keep them turning the pages because yeah. you got to get the answer. Who's this person? Was it? What you know? Right. All that stuff. That's how it's supposed to be. Don't tell them what. You, don't give them the answer in the beginning. Make them wait to the end. Uh, Marie Halverson is in the house. How are you? That's Mari. Uh, Mari. Oh, church. okay. Yeah. Ryan Mari and Ryan. Mari Halverson from yeah. Twin Cities Grace Fellowship. Great to see Josh and Michelle. I totally agree. We, we ought to get Michelle. We, we're at a quarter till. Uh, how long are you guys able to stick around? Well, we got it. We're going to have to wait a little bit for want. the for the for the weather to clear up, so you guys can go swimming, don't you think? <laughs> so let's keep Josh here another five hours, six hours maybe. Sounds good. No problem. You don't have a problem with that, do you, kids? No. All right. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, uh, let me get some. Let me get some more mics and uh, bring bring the kids up here. Hey, say something brilliant. Oh man. Talk about. Uh, there's some. There, the the talk about. Um, I have this whole big thing I was going to do on the uh, on holiness. You, one of my, I remember you holiness. remember that article you did on the rich heritage in Christ. Yeah. Um, I, well, I mean, I've got the paragraph here. Uh, oftentimes, when we think about God choosing us to be holy in Christ, yeah, we think about His power to do so. It's easy to chalk up God making us holy to His incredible power. Of course, if God is God, it wouldn't be much for Him to make us holy before Him. However. If we do not understand that God is holy, then we fail to appreciate the honor of being made holy as well as the degree of power is much more than just incredible. Mm. You know, the holy, the, you know, that was one of the things I loved about your articles because of the emphasis on holiness. Holiness is a, it should be a source of comfort. It's a kind of a terror and a comfort yeah, because yeah. of his holiness. You know, he is. He, because of his holiness, he is, he, is, he is never inconsistent in his character. You know, when he makes a promise, he is going to keep that promise because of the pureness of his holiness, you know, which is a comforting thing to us. Yeah. And to know because of his character that the perfection of what his, of what, uh, his son accomplished at Calvary, you know, we know that that is sufficient because God tells us it's sufficient as a payment, and He is holy. Yeah, you know, He is. We can rest in His promises because He is holy. I love that emphasis on His holiness in your articles. You don't hear that very often, and it is so very important an attribute of God. Yeah, yeah I think that, I think it's the arguably could be identified as the chiefest attribute of God. It's the only one where. Um, it's mentioned three times, holy, 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 yes. Isaiah, totally. and in Revelation. And without that, all the other attributes of God, therefore, are thus. They are, you know, he's, uh, his love, his grace, his kindness. I don't think I would be good at this. Huh? I I did a radio show one time. <laughs> it's hard. You and gotta, I just talk, you gotta yeah, be able just to talk just about talk. the doctrine, but yeah, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. did a fantastic job, brother. Uh, I loved it. I can't I loved remember. It. I can't remember come, what I just come said. Come over here, close to me. All right. Arm to arm, uh, Michelle. We're gonna put you in an uncomfortable chair at the end. <laughs> and now you no, just no, just stay, stay in your chair okay. and just scoot closer to me. Gotcha. There you go. 
There we go. All right, I got the family up here. Come check out this beautiful family. I mean, clearly they got the good looks from their mother. That's right. Hey, Josiah, are you ever worried about losing hair when you get older? <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, um, uh, say uh, uh, this is uh, this is Ab Abigail. Mm -hmm. Is she named after Abigail in the Old Testament? She is. She is. I, I love the I love um, I love that story of how she handled David. I think Abigail is a brilliant lady. Mm -hmm. um, I love that story. Yeah. How old are you? Eleven. Eleven. Uh, you have any? Uh, you? Um, I don't know. What's she exciting? What do you up. like? What do you like to do outside of? I like to ride horses. Ah, uh, you like to ride horses. Mm -hmm. You guys got a lot of horses where you're at at Twin City? Uh, not too much. We have ranches. Mm -hmm. Uh, ranches? My mom purchased a horse, and Abigail takes lessons from her cousin, Oh. Addison. Yes. Hey, look at there. Oh, we can see everybody can on there. You, you like horses. That's cool. Uh, let's see. How long have you guys been married, the two of you? 14 years. 14 years. Mm -hmm. This month it'll be 14. Oh, uh, wow. May 31st. A show off. <laughs> Clearly trying to impress the wife because you remember the anniversary date. Uh, Very yeah, good. Is he good about that sort of thing? Remembering anniversary days? Yeah. Uh, yes. It's, is Josh romantic? This is what I'd like to know. No. Did, did Josh have any great Christian pickup lines or something he used on you in college? He gave me a framed sign that we still have. <laughs> that said the verse that he had in his home so oh. as for me and my house we shall serve the lord wow That's mm -hmm. how and you're like okay pressure. this guy's this guy's this guy's got potential here mm -hmm. yeah i like him yeah yeah when she moved in with some of her girlfriends in college into their new house right i went over and i made a little thing put in a picture frame and wanted to try to <laughs> impress her. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I said, well, this is for your house, but it was really for her. <laughs> the, uh, uh, so what did you do on a first date? Did you do anything fun? Kind of went out, did a movie, dinner and movie kind of thing? We didn't have oh. an official first date, I yeah. wouldn't say. Oh. Uh, yeah, we went we to were, Olive Garden. We did that yeah, a lot. Olive, Olive Garden. Garden. Yeah. It, was <laughs> it was close by campus. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a college guy. I need to do the all-you-can-eat soup salad and breadstick because this, <laughs> this dinner is going to last me a, 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 about at least three days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. How you doing, Mr. Josiah? Good. Do you like the, uh, is he named after Josiah the Boy King? Yes. Mm -hmm. I love that story, Josiah the Boy King. Um, cause I, you know, the thing I love about him is the fact that he, he tore down those idols yeah. off of Mount, uh, um, Mount of Olives. Yeah. It took a boy to fix the mistakes of the wisest man that ever lived. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. What do we have here, Josiah? What is that? My little stuffed animal I got at Disney World. You got that at Disney World? Yeah. Oh, I'll bet you had to pay an arm. You get, did you have to take a mortgage out to, to buy that thing? <laughs> <laughs> we, we got some gracious gifts to be able to get souvenirs. Oh, to be able to get stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Uh, so you got that at the Magic Kingdom? Yeah, did you have a good time? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what do you like to do? Play basketball. You like to play basketball like the old man? Yeah, you probably had some father-son time uh, with him out on the basketball court, and you instilled in him the love of basketball. You still shoot some hoops, hoops Josh? Uh, with Josiah. Yeah? yeah, yeah. You got a basketball court where you live, or a hoop where you live? Yeah, we have. We have, <laughs> uh, we have a. He's got a, a youth uh, hoop in the backyard, and then we have a park right across from our street. Oh, you're such so, a you're such a good go dad. Oh, going out there, I used to uh, throw the ball with my dad. Yeah. We get our baseball gloves out and yep. just throw the ball. Uh, I feel like that's like a really good thing because kids today they don't get out much. They don't do much. They're all addicted to technology and stuff, you know? Uh, and I know so much of the homeschooling stuff is a lot of that's online too, but, yeah. you know, um, yeah, we don't it's good to get your kids out and do stuff. So mm -hmm. they enjoy being outside and yeah. playing. Yeah. yeah, I saw this article where this lady has, um, has this practice where she's helping parents uh, help their kids detox off of technology because oh, yeah. it's your dopamine levels are like through the roof, you know, and they, they're, you know, it's, it's a totally, it, real life is kind of boring yeah. because of the yeah. way games and stuff are on the phone. Uh, John, you know Robert Bell out there in I Edgewater? Yeah, he was in uh, Illinois. He was in I Chicago, didn't get to meet yeah. him. Um, he, uh, his, uh, he, he runs the Grace Camp down here and he was telling me a long time ago, you know, he makes the kids throw their phones in the 
in a basket, and you, you're not allowed to have it the whole week That's during wonderful. camp. And uh, and they free and they will sometimes bring fake phones to throw in the baskets, so they can hide their real phones. And Josh is or, uh, Robert's really good at busting them on the real phones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and he and I I said, do you do you find that kids today have trouble interacting with others and talking to them? And it's like it, with some of them, it's really bad. And uh, so I was like, well, what do you do to help them? He says, well, it actually really helps with some of them to. You make them put their phone away, and and you know, you, sitting with them it doesn't work. Take them out and go for a walk, and then talk with them on a walk, and then they will actually start to loosen up and open up and start talking about things. But they need that kind of movement and you know, um, th that kind of um, visual stimulation of yeah. walking and seeing things in order to get the mind working Substitute and get the mouth it. talking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's so weird to think of that with kids kids today. You yeah. know. Yep. Um, yeah, we. I mean, I think us, I mean, cell phones were just becoming a thing when we were growing up. Right, you know, so right. I didn't have one until I was in high school. Oh, I refused. I had, to, I, had to pay, I had to pay for mine. Oh, I refused for the longest time. I didn't want to be, if I'm out, I don't want to be bothered. Yeah. You know, I didn't want to yeah. be, inter I'm out, I want to have fun, you yeah. know. I never, uh, I was the last of my friends to get one because yeah. I was just, I was the last holdout. I just didn't want it. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, that's a beautiful family you got there, man. Yes. Josiah yes. was going to sing a song, right? Oh, yeah. really? Josiah can sing? One thing yeah. we started doing a couple years ago is we started putting verses to song. And so Josiah Wow. Was one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally got to hear this. I totally got to hear this. All right. Do, you, do we need do we, do we need um uh some a drum roll or something or no. yeah. oh, What's the, what's the verse? Second Timothy one seven. Second Timothy one seven. I cannot wait to hear this. This is awesome. All right. Second Timothy one <laughs> seven. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, <laughs> but of power and hey. of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Second Timothy one seven. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. That's awesome. Can you sing too, Abby? Well, what do you do? What do you, do you have any? You have any songs in your back pocket? Do you want to sing a different sing? one? No. But we have a podcast. Mm -hmm. Huh? You have a podcast. We that's do. right. Yeah. Wait a minute. I mean, you mean outside of Holy Appetizer? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There's another one. Yep. Yeah. It's called Kids Verse Songs, and they sing on there. Um. Yeah, I've seen I've seen on, videos on of the that. Web, yeah. On the website, TwinCitiesGraceFellowship.com, and then study studying the word. It's uh. That just STW the group, the word. okay. Yeah, and then if you go down, just keep going. You'll see that right there, kids. Oh songs yes, okay. I did. I it did not click with me. Oh, mm -hmm. look at that. All right, here I will share the link to these cute. Look at these cute kids. What the muffins? Uh -huh. Is that what they're holding? I got they're muffins, but nobody dug into the muffins this morning. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I will. Uh, oh, we got pizza. We're gonna get some pizza. Uh, you ever had a pizza bowl? I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a couple pizza bowls and some pizzas. Uh, there's a place down the street that um, pizza bowl. Yeah, they put all the stuff of pizza in a bowl and they cook it, but it's without the dough. Oh, really? So you just take you know because oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. there's people want to avoid oh, got to the, all the, the breads cars. and yeah, stuff. Sounds yeah. like a yeah keto yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, let me see what else do we have here. Um, Hey, we got Stephanie Reed is in the house. She hey. says, just tuning in. We'll rewatch later, but wanted to say hi to the Streleckis. Abby says hi to Abby, too. Hi, Abby. Uh, uh, that's awesome. Um, They've become pen pals. Mm -hmm. Let me yes. Uh, introduce them at the, the conference in April. Um, Abby's uh, hilariously smart. Uh, we we did a board game and uh, I was t had it teamed up with her and I just like Abby what what, what do you think whatever you think's best you probably know better than I do uh, <laughs> um, she's great um, the kids were um, kids were great fun I'm not um, you know not a big kids guy but I have to admit your kids are pretty cool <laughs> I'll make an exception for your kids and the Reed's kids um, but uh, yeah Abby's Abby's awesome uh, what else do we have here we've got um anything new here all right well what else do we have we what, what else have we um we've got about two minutes what else um what are you going to do uh for the rest of your vacation here you're just going to chill let it work you know for a vacation to really work you need two weeks 
At least. You gotta come down here for two weeks. I know. Yeah. I'm already sad, it's almost it's too over. Difficult. Yeah. No it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too, you got too you got many, too many uh too many responsibilities. Good responsibilities. Yeah, you got um uh, you got you have uh, guys in the church that can yes. uh, fill in. That's yep. an awesome thing. Yeah, yeah, very thankful for uh, the men who step up. Yeah, we're very fortunate here yeah. too. We got a couple of different guys that we can uh, uh, come in and substitute on Sunday morning. Yeah. So I'm very excited to hear them yeah. get up and preach. And I feel like it's a really good thing. You know, we're just gonna try to swim as much as possible. Probably uh, yeah. just relax yeah. at the pool uh, if the weather holds out. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Josh. How do we? Uh, how, if somebody doesn't know how to get saved, they don't know. They don't know where they're going to spend the rest of eternity. Can you give them? Can you tell them how to how to how to get that free gift of eternal life? And before you do that, scoot up for me just a hair, brother. There we go. Yeah. How do how do you how do you get saved? You know. Well, it is a free gift, um, and we need it to be free yeah. because we can't do anything in and of ourselves. We can't work for it. He's gonna bug you, huh? <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't. Say you're not, I, you're I not really shouldn't kids. because people complain when I do something else when the gospel's given. You know, oh, oh. If I eat when somebody gives the gospel or something, like what's well, so sacrilege for you to? Yeah, <laughs> I'll behave myself. I promise. Uh, it's got, it has to be a free gift because amen. We can't buy our works, earn it, nor buy our works receive it. And um, it needs to be a free gift of salvation. It's salvation because we're deserving of God's wrath uh, it's eternal wrath against our sin and that's why Christ came and he died on the cross to pay the wages of our sin that was buried and rose again amen and we receive it not by Preach working it. but by faith and faith alone in the moment we believe uh, we are justified we are forgiven our sins declared righteous because of his righteousness is imputed to us and we received the gift of eternal life as well as all of our new identification amen yep yep totally was that it so believe and be saved <laughs> <laughs> faith alone i loved it i loved it josh i can't tell you how well, awesome it is us. having you here it's li- having us you, you have uh it's um uh deep privilege you are always welcome here that chair is yours brother we uh we come f- down we feel man. that sentiment so oh, appreciate it man uh all right how about a word of prayer heavenly father how grateful we are for Josh, Michelle, Abigail, and uh, this cute little kid here, uh, Josiah. Um, Father, we're just so grateful for their faithfulness, their love, um, their, their abounding hope, their passion for uh, your entire program of grace, the ministry that they have over in Twin Cities and to us and to everybody online. Um, how grateful I am for their just every for everything that they are, which we know is only possible because of your son. And Father, we we love you so very much. We are so grateful to you for everything that you've done for us, in us, and through us. We're so grateful to just have this chance to have fellowship with these dear saints. And I just pray, Father, that uh, uh, everybody who uh, gets the chance to join us uh, to listen in will just be inspired to dig into your word. Uh, to to be just have their minds renewed, their their spirits strengthened, and they will uh, they will uh, come to appreciate and abound in hope and and joy uh, like all of us. Uh, Father, I lift up a number of folks. I'll just real quick say all the saints in the live chat, every one of them. I lift them all up, including all of the physical needs. But this morning, I just lift up especially Randy and Ellen who uh, lost their son Peter this morning. I lift them up above all. I know Fred and Gwen's with them today, and um, uh, I love those dear saints, and I just pray for peace and comfort and grace in these circumstances. And I also pray, Father, that all of us, we will all abound in love and grace toward each other. We will take advantage of every opportunity for... Uh, to share the gospel with the lost and the dying and we will and even if they're with the other believers we'll help them come into the knowledge of the truth and we will do all these things uh, to as a living thank you for everything you've done for us and I just pray that we everything we say and do will be to the honor and glory of your son our savior and it's in his name we pray amen amen dude I'm I want to do it all over again I loved thank having you, you here well, I loved it we dearly love being here uh, um, 
All right, so we will. Uh, we're going to have us a bad weekend. We will be back here at nine thirty. I'm going to do. I'm going to do a message dedicated just to Josh Trelecki, which he's already figured out. And then on, uh, and then we're going to have Josh preaching for the main service here. Uh, he's going to give a prosperity gospel message. Am, yeah. I, am, I, am I wrong? Uh, it's a prosperity I'm gospel that's message. That's what I'm going to give. He's, he's, that's what he's doing. So you got to check it out. Come on back. I love you guys dearly. Have a bad weekend, and we'll see you on Sunday. Take care.